Welcome back to episode 154 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. It's Sunday afternoon. Well, kind of Sunday early evening. <laughs> Not Gong Show at night, so maybe we'll nope. be a little more awake. I was getting nervous. Day. It might be though, because I was strong. I was on. I've already said, told Josh, I'm on. The, I was on the struggle bus for writing. But I yeah, got what happened to you this weekend? You had a like, oh, action packed weekend or something like that. Busy, 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 and just because I know everyone wants to know, we beat Edina. If you follow high school hockey, Edina is always the hated team, and I'll be honest, Minnetonka is probably an always hated team too. So the two hated teams played each other, and we beat them. They were up two zip. With five minutes and 50 seconds left in the game, they were out playing us in every facet. And all of a sudden, something clicked, and we got a goal off a rebound. And then, like, I don't know, 45 seconds, a minute later, we scored the tying goal on just a rocket from the slot. And then we won it in overtime about not very far into it, but one of the best plays we've ever done just from a hustle standpoint and back check or not back checking, but for checking. It's fantastic when you watch it on video, but it was it was good to beat them because obviously it's Edina. Well, it's always good to beat Edina, right? Yeah. They're, the, <laughs> they're the cake eaters. And we, I had people I've heard people call Minnetonka where I coach cake eaters too. So maybe we're all just cake eaters. Well, they're the OG cake eaters. Yeah, they're probably they're the new OGs. school. But cake Edina, eaters. Edina has one of the best high school jerseys ever. They're so awesome. The North Star colors, the curse of Edina script, they're just fantastic. I kind of feel like, well, it's hard to know in the Minnesota bubble here, but I feel like in hockey circles, Edina is fairly well known nationally. They should be. I know there's been national stories like in the New York Times and SI on Edina and just the history. And now they're getting a bunch of money to update Braemar Arena, which is good because Braemar is one of those iconic places and it's kind of falling apart. (laughs) So they're going to revamp that a little bit. What did you say like last week or the week before about their association size? Where oh, if you if you took Edina's Youth Hockey Association, the number of I think players registered with USA Hockey, took it out of everything, it would be the third biggest in the country by itself. <laughs> so it's amazing how many kids you look at their website, how many teams they have at the youth level. It's insane. Oh wow, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, did not have a, as exciting of a weekend as you, I guess. Uh, got her at a hockey game. She broke her stick in half, so that, that turns into a four hundred dollar game. But yeah, yeah I gotta go fix that tomorrow. Uh, blocked a shot and came back, and she said, "I looked down and half my stick was gone." So it's like, well, way to block the oh, shot. She's, she's lucky she didn't get a penalty. You're supposed to drop your stick immediately, or did she get back to the. Oh. I mean, on the ice, she looked down, not on the bench. Yeah. On the yeah. ice, she looked down and then gotcha. skated back to the bench. Gotcha. So, yeah. But another big show today. A lot to get into, of course. Uh, before, we, before we get started, just a real quick reminder that our podcast, the Hockey Cards Gong Show, is a Patreon podcast. That means we rely on supportive listeners like yourself to help us cover our show expenses, produce more, and hopefully better hockey card content and fund initiatives, even in a small way to grow the hockey hobby. It's very easy to support us. You can do it through Patreon. We have an out of 199 support level tier. It starts at $5 a month. You also get access to our Discord server and can chat with us and the rest of the crew there on a daily basis. It's very easy to do. Just go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com, and click on the Become a Patron link at the top of the page. If you want to just go to Patreon directly, it's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. There's a link in the show description whether you're listening to us on a podcast app or on youtube and then finally in our tiktok and instagram profiles there's a link there we have one new on a 199 member card dungeon so thank you so much for your support we greatly greatly appreciate it welcome uh, already in discord so happy to uh, have him in there you ready with the game plan man i am but i just want to mention card dungeon i think of him having like a basement full of like candles (laughs) and the cards are flickering in the lights i love that name all right let's go it's on today's episode we begin with the almost greatest player to wear number 54 then it's off to who's hot and the struggle bus next it's hobby news this is followed by a look at if 2023 24 will be the year to stash wax and josh because i'm an idiot i'm assuming when i wrote this i meant 23 24 set year releases are, yeah. are they the releases the stash wax Gotcha. Yeah, I was shocked by what I found. Yeah, in that. So I'm, I'm excited to get into it. Definitely. We then look at new product releases and tackle another edition of the Gong Show mailbag. 
we end the show with personal pickups. Okay, Josh. Previously, we looked at the greatest NHL player that wore the number that matched our episode number. We ran through the numbers, and we are now looking at the almost greatest NHL player to wear each number from the runners-up list in the Hockey Writers' Greatest NHL Player to wear each number article. I put him on the screen early, Josh. I guess I wanted everyone to see him. The almost greatest NHL player to wear number 54 per the nominees in the Hockey Writers' Greatest NHL Player to wear each number article and selected by me, which wasn't hard because there was only one, is Adam <laughs> Wade. Never even heard of this guy. I feel bad that I don't. He played up until recently, like I think three years ago maybe, if I remember right. So I feel like a bonehead that I haven't heard of this guy, but I didn't. This was like one where I was like, I have no idea who this guy is. All right, Josh. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna sound like, and I'm sorry, I'm yeah. skipping ahead a few seconds here. But so he's in the 2005 draft. How are all these guys coming into the league? It has to be the numbers they gave out. They probably didn't give them out until this run of – it could have been, I wonder if there's a, you know, now that I think about it more, I wonder if there's a rule change or something because all these guys are had the, in we the gotta look at it's just, it's yeah. way beyond coincidence. I mean, it feels like weeks where it's been. They, well, we know, we know up until the what seven mid seventies, eighties, they never gave anyone higher than 30, the goalies. Right. Sure. So I'm guessing, yeah. I'm guessing there was a rule change or, just an overall general change and with these higher numbers coming into play. And now we're seeing all these guys that played, you know, 10 yeah, the games, like years. 120 years old. And, <laughs> and all these yeah. guys are in like a three year span for the past two weeks. Yeah. Kind of I was pretty sure there's a rule back in the day where it had to be one through whatever 30, but we'll, we'll look it up. Maybe okay. <laughs> if we decide to, as I mentioned, there were no other, no other runner ups at number 54. So that made it easy on me. As a reminder, the greatest to wear number 54 was David Jones, Josh. All right, Josh. Defenseman Adam McQuaid from Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. McQuaid was selected 55th overall. Boy, that would be cool if it was 54th overall to match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 55th overall in the 2005 NHL entry draft by the Columbus Blue Jackets. However, before playing a game in the NHL, McQuaid would be traded in 2007 to the Boston Bruins. McQuaid played in 512 regular season NHL games over a 10 season NHL career. McQuaid played his first nine seasons with the Boston Bruins. I, I'm going to actually let me read this. He played his final season in the NHL with the New York Rangers and Columbus Blue Jackets. Gotcha. I keep saying McQuaid. Wasn't that the name of the bad guy in Total Recall? I've been thinking like Steve McQueen, Randy Quaid. <laughs> if Steve McQueen and Randy Quaid somehow got married and had a baby, it would be Adam McQuaid. Yeah, the, the whole McQuaid thing, it feels like I was thinking of like um, DuckTales, like Scrooge McDuck for some reason, too. I don't know. I, literally, all these things have been going through my head while you're talking. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it, was, maybe it was Quaid. Oh, I think it's Quaid is the bad I don't even know if he's the bad guy. Total Recall, Douglas Quaid. Schwarzenegger's name is Douglas Quaid. That's where I'm going. Gotcha. So, oh, and then can I ask you a thing about numbers real quick? Because this is the other thing I'm thinking yes. about. Yes. Let's say like Macklin Celebrini gets drafted number one. Yeah. And he comes in. He's like, I want to be number one. Is there like a rule like with like certain numbers that they have to be goalie numbers? I thought there was back in the day. I could be totally wrong. I don't know if there's an actual rule against it now. But I'm guessing any team would just be like, whatever, dude. <laughs> you can take whatever number we give you as you're a rookie. But because football used to be like that. Like, remember if you were a lineman, yes, you, had you had to be between these numbers and a running back. And then they kind of got rid of it now. Like wide receivers were always like 70s and 80s, right? It was yeah, basically I, tight ends were 70s or something like that. The only rule I really remember from our stuff doing this was double zero couldn't be worn anymore after the one guy wore it because it broke the NHL stat database. Mm. <laughs> so that was the one. That was the one. Was it John Davidson? Was he double zero? I boy, you think I'd remember my own show? No, but I, I do not. Now we've see. proven it time and again we don't. So no, we don't know our own show. All right, let's keep going on McQuaid. So where was I? Okay, for his word and accomplishments. He was a one-time Stanley Cup winner, Josh, in 2011 with Boston. 
for his career, McQuaid's regular season stat line was 16 goals, 57 assists for 73 points. Really? Yes. We'll get to it. Oh, there's been nobody we'll get to why. better than we'll, this. Okay. Yeah. No, no. They, I mean, I. if you look at the article, it's like, here's David Jones. Or was that the other guy? The guy, the greatest yeah. was David Jones. And then, like, here's McQuaid. All right. McQuaid made the playoffs in five of his 10 NHL seasons, combining three goals, eight assists for 11 points, and 68 NHL playoff games played. Best season of his NHL career from a point standpoint was this 2010-11 season where I put Morris, that's wrong, that was probably from the last show, where McQuaid had three goals, 12 assists for 15 points in 67 games played with the Boston Bruins. Okay, Josh, we, the points are brutally low, but yeah, no here's why, kind of. McQuaid was primarily known for being an enforcer and for his physical play. His role was one of a protector, and he was not afraid to drop the gloves to protect players on his team. McQuaid is what we think of as a throwback defenseman. That's how I kind of looked at him. Stay at home, tough as nails. He was not a point-producing machine. He was also a huge guy at six foot four, 210 pounds, physical presence on the ice. As you can see, if you're watching YouTube, he wasn't afraid to mix it up. But this was not a guy, obviously, with 15 points being his season or his career record for a season. He wasn't yeah. going to be a point producing machine, but he was out there for another reason to add a physical presence and also step up if needed to drop the gloves, which we're kind of running out of those guys. I mean, Arbor Jack, I, I see like Reeves. I don't know if it's Reeves. Yeah, it's Reeves still playing. Um, I think Rebo, those, though, is like in and out of the press box. In yeah, front of the those. Those guys are kind of going away, it seems, but we will see as we keep going. But I know, you know I what this guy would be in today a hockey player if he'd be a goalie, right? At six four. No, for, no kidding. At six foot four, throw some pads on him. Yeah, I remember. I, I think I was when I was mentioning Jack Guy, didn't he just get in a fight like a couple of days ago and just pound someone? I know a wild guy got in a fight and just dropped the guy from was it Florida? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see the game. Well, I'll go. To, we need to go to hockeyfights.com and start reading up, <laughs> reading up the daily fights. All right. So after retiring, Josh, uh oh, lost my picture. I don't know what to do with it. All right. After retiring, McQuaid joined the Boston Bruins in 2021 as the team's player development coordinator. So thank God he didn't go in the ambassador route. He's actually doing player development. He's actually still the player development coordinator for the Bruins. I looked him up. He's still on the website. Good to go. So that's good to see. All right, Josh. Fun, interesting facts. This is great. His nickname, Darth Quader. That's funny. Come on. that That's a good one. That's a better one. That's funny. So around the Darth Quader nickname, the Bruins even had T-shirts with the moniker on them. McQuaid played into the bit by dressing in black most of the time when he came to the rink. Well, at that. least his nickname wasn't like McQuaidy. Like they McQuaidy. Always do it. McQuaidster. During game four of the 2011 Stanley Cup Finals, everyone's favorite analyst, Pierre Maguire, called McQuaid one tough ombre. That's some that's some deep hockey knowledge right there. Thank you, <laughs> Pierre. In 2010, McQuaid suffered a freak concussion by tripping over his suitcase. Oh, geez. I, I seriously want a list of all the guys that have done the dumb injury. I'm sure it's out on the internet. Someone's already done it. But, but you know, let's be honest. I mean... It- they left the back half of that sentence off, probably while drunk. I don't, you know, I, going, you, you always wonder about that. You always this wonder. This guy's going that. party quite a bit. Come on. <laughs> All right. In October of 2012, a blood clot was discovered near his left collarbone, a product of thoracic outlet syndrome, and required two surgeries one to address the clot itself, the other to prevent reoccurrence. The procedure, Josh, involved cutting the muscles around the clot. And then removing a rib. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Love our no, thank you. No, no, thank you. Love our injury updates. Okay, that's what we got on. De- on De- I just want to say Dennis Quaid, uh, <laughs> Adam McQuaid. All right, his rookie card, Josh. Oh boy, let's let's find the picture. Let's fire this thing up. So first of all, there's only seven graded copies of his cards ever at PSA, and nine graded cards ever at Beckett. None of the graded cards at PSA are his rookie cards. 
I, that's, I think, a first I've ever seen. His rookie card with the most graded copies at BGS is his 2010-11, and it's on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, Score Hot Rookies, number 549. Josh, it has two graded copies at BGS, both being nines. Ooh, tough gem. Jeff Jeff, 0%. Couldn't find any sales of any of the obviously the two BGS copies out there. He's probably got them. I don't know. Rock copies sell for around a whopping one dollar. Now, Josh, he does have a 2010-11 upper deck, the cup number 97, serial numbered out of 199. That sells raw from anywhere 2000 or sorry, 2000 from ten dollars to thirty-five dollars. Again, fantastic picture. On I think the he's card. whistling. He's I think whistling. he's whistling or just going home. Home. You've seen that meme where the cat's like home. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like he's doing. Very interesting. This is this is a fun one to do. And I love when the graded copies are so low. It's kind of interesting to see which cards are graded. I think the biggest, the most graded card at PSA was like a 2011 commemorative Boston Bruins set mm. that I'm sure people probably wanted to grade the whole thing. Because why else would you? grade the Dennis or I give up Adam McQuaid card but again there we go runner up almost greatest at number 54 Adam McQuaid there is kind of a Dennis Quaid tied to hockey you know what that is, is Canadian no Randy Quaid it's Randy Quaid Randy was so Dennis is like the good looking movie star one yeah are they brothers or cousins I think so I think the brothers, yeah, right, brothers. But the Randy Quaid tie into hockey is every hockey tournament I've ever been to has the silent auction deals, like with the photos, like and in Minnesota, it's like a Miracle on Ice jersey that you can bid on, or it's like a Capri Soft Mike, jersey, <laughs> Capri Soft jersey, or Jewel Erickson Eck, yeah, some football play like Je- Justin Jefferson or. You know, stuff like that. And there's three non hockey ones at every single one. <laughs> there's the Mike Tyson punch yes, out. Yes, still signed by Mike Tyson. We've there's the Sandlot yeah. with all the Sandlot cast. And then there's the Randy Quaid from Christmas Vacation. The, I'm not going to say it because we're a family show, the Crapper's Full Clark, right? Where he, he does the inscription. Yeah. That's, that's at everyone. Yeah. That's so, awesome. I kind of associate that with hockey tournaments as well. <laughs> All right, Troy, it's time for week 15 of Who's Hot in the Struggle Bus. Week 15 already. Can you believe that? All right. Wow. So Who's Hot's where we take a look at NHL players who are on fire over the past week or two. Figuratively, Troy, not literally. It'd be no, sad if they were rather. literally on fire. We also fill up the struggle bus with players where, well, the struggle's real. But like we always do, we're going to start this week's list of Who's Hot. And we're going to homer it out. For the first guy, Troy, we're going to go with our Minnesota Wild, but it's not Kirill Kaprizov. It's not Matt Boldy. It's not Marco Rossi. It's young Brock Faber. There we go. This guy, not Boldy. This guy on the right, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, And this was a nomination from Discord, so we can't even take credit for being homers here. The 21-year-old Wild defenseman, he also looks like a fantastic hugger, if you're watching on YouTube. (laughs) And he looks like he's 14 years old and should still be in high school. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, he's had a pretty good past couple of weeks. The former Golden Gophers captain has one goal, eight assists for nine points in his last eight games played on the season. That brings him up to three goals, 22 assists for 25 points in 45 games. I think he needs to be more selfish, Troy. Three yep. goals, 22 assists. Assist machine. Stop it. Faber is currently tied with Adam Fantilli for third on the rookie points leaderboard. Number two is Marco Rossi and Connor Bedard's so good. He doesn't play and he's still number one. <laughs> For now. Now, Troy, given our team season is the typical dumpster fire that we yep. knew and expect it would be, having two guys, number two and three, in the rookie scoring race, is that's got to be our silver lining. But is that all negated by the Great Wall of St. Paul letting in? <laughs> I shouldn't say letting in. The team let in six goals yep. in his NHL debut for Jesper Wallstead. So he might have the worst <laughs> stats for the goalies, but again, it's one. Yeah, game. that's a that's a tough. One. Doesn't count. Got to have a minimum of like five. We're gonna forget probably. about that for a minute. Yeah. Uh, Faber is though leading all NHL rookies in time on ice, and by a long shot. Yeah, he's, he's averaging twenty four minutes forty one seconds per game. Second by a rookie is Simon Nemec from 
New Jersey with 20 minutes, 46 seconds. So almost four minutes more. He's also 11th in the NHL overall in time on ice. Hmm. Well, they've had a ton of injuries in the blue line and it's required to favor to step up a little bit, but that's a lot to ask a rookie as he's kind of getting the toughest assignments and generally seems up to the task. So um, pretty lucky in, in that regard. I was very, I've been very, very down on their trade of Kevin Fiala. Not that I loved Kevin Fiala so much, but he scored a lot and it wasn't, we had, we've had a hard time replacing that production, no. but now it seems worth it with how good Faber's been. Uh, I feel better about the, the Fiala trade and Faber trade has never really been a goal scorer ever. Even his last season at the U, uh, the U University of Minnesota, he only scored four goals in 38 games played. Basically, this year, he's yeah. pacing for a career high in goals in a season. And by career, Troy, I mean back to 14 <laughs> 14 year hockey. This dude has never scored goals. <laughs> so if you're excited about Brock Faber and you're thinking he's the next Bobby Orr, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the next Roman Yossi if, if everything works yeah. out. But um, yeah, he's definitely not a goal scorer. And so given that, I, I don't know if there's Kale McCarr hobby upside here, but uh, very, very pumped that we have him on our team, Troy. Brock Faber's a 2023-24 young gun. Says PSA 10 has a pop of 33, 36% gem rate. That's over 155 US. Oosh. Still in that, I think, Series 1 PSA 10 honeymoon period here. Yeah, you you wait. You just wait if you want this card. You wait. You'll get it. It'll be it's fine. like a $48 <laughs> young gun. Yeah, I'm sorry, Brock. I love you. Yeah. I'm happy to have you, but yeah. Just and it's out. about flat since the beginning of the month. Yeah. Okay, you got the next guy who's hot? I do, and now just get ready, Josh. It seems like we bring up Toronto guys. All heck breaks loose <laughs> in the messages and everything. So here we go. Josh, I'm going with Mitch Marner. So I guess That's Toronto. A photo. Yeah, great photo. You get an A for photo selection. Well, well, I was like, this is probably him reacting to hearing he made the Who's Hot list. So he's pretty happy about it. I know I would. And I want to point this out too. Some people don't get this. And this might be an older photo because – but you see his skates, a yeah. lot of guys wear these plastic covers over them. And if you ever wonder those are, it's for pucks. So Because if you block a lot of shots, you want this plastic cover over it to stop your foot from hurting or breaking. But yeah, I love that you can see that these are on there. Not everyone wears them, but just an interesting tidbit if you're watching on YouTube with the photo. Okay, Josh, over the past two weeks, 26-year-old Maple Leafs forward has put up five goals and five assists for 10 points in seven games. Marner has also had a pretty decent season this year, tallying 20 goals, 30 assists for 50 points in 44 games played. Marner is on three hundred point guys. Do you think? What's that? Oh, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. If, it, it's got to be crazy. Of... Do you think that's ever happened? Yes, I would like, guess like, so. In oh, the high you know what I guess eras, like. Like Gretzky, Paul Coffey, and Messi and, Messi and Curry. Or Curry, yeah, it's had yeah. to happen. Um, okay, so Marner, thirty or twenty goals, thirty assists, fifty points, forty-four games played, on pace for ninety-three points, which would be just shy of his career high in points of ninety-nine last season. Now, for his career, Marner has one hundred and eighty-eight goals. Uh oh, this is not as bad as Brock Faber, but we're getting in yeah. assist machine territory. Four hundred sixteen assists. For 604 points in 551 games played. Now, our boy Marner, Josh, he's part of that Toronto, the core four is what I heard him calling them. Yeah. With Austin Matthews, William Nylander, and Jonathan Tavares, which, hint, hint, is coming up. We yeah. all know about the money tied up in this group. Now, I looked it up. Marner signed through the 24 25 season. And Again, Marner falls in that cis machine category a bit, but he did mention his focus this year is on shooting the puck more. He's on pace for 37 goals this year, which would definitely be a career high for him. And even though this is a who's hot segment, I kind of started reading more about Marner. And where he really gets knocked is when you, if you go start looking at those deeper analytic numbers, which some people throw out and think they're bonkers, they don't make sense, they're whatever. But the athletic has done some pretty good in-depth work on Marner, and I'm not going to go into everything. It's it's way too dense 
And if you're not into this, it will put you to sleep. But just to give you a kind of some highlights on these analytic numbers that people are worried about in that realm about Marner. So his scoring pace is 3.16 points per 60 minutes. And this pace is the lowest he's ever been since the 2019-20 season. Also, his game score, and I've talked about game score. It was a, it's a metric developed by Don Lushizan. Go read about it. Has dropped from 1.37 to 1.10 through 42 games. So he ended last year at 1.37. He's now at 1.1. That's a pretty significant drop if you look at the number. And again, Shana Goldman from the Athletic has a lot more analysis on this stuff. If you have a subscription, go read it. She's awesome. She goes into analytics stuff like crazy so, but that's kind of the he's on who's hot but there is some of that back end worrying about how martyr is going to keep progressing but for now hey he's who's hot do we need a who's hot bus do we ever figure out what we're doing with the who's hot like who's who's hot party hot tub. the hot tub there we go i like it all right so okay well i got well, a question for you yeah go so for it. there's the there's the new expansion draft you're, you're the expansion team yeah teams can only protect one player and the maple Leafs protect the 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 world's famous most famous mustache of course yeah uh, who are you taking you taking Marner or you taking Nylander I'd probably take Nylander it just seems like yeah Nylander seems more like a game breaker more explosive more like, yeah fired up yeah I would definitely I was I would I would definitely I think take Nylander maybe I'm a big analytics guy and all this stuff is so concerning to me but no wait no, it I, does I, feel like Nylander might be passing him a little bit too it'd be kind of interesting to see if there's like a hobby sort of change into the guard there. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think Nylander is a little more of a goal scorer too, mm. which I just, I need goals, but our boy, Josh, Mitch Marner, he's on, who's hot. He's a 2016 young gun, young guns. His PSA 10 pop is 1,380 with a 62% gem rate last sold for 297 us dollars on December 14th in january oh i apologize yeah that's right so in january of 2024 i went and kind of looked at all the sales in january and this card like bounces all around between 250 dollars and 350 us range it just kind of up and down up and down and it's kind of done that also all season it never really breaks out of that 250 to 315 us range gotcha so there you go but it last sold on december 14th or is that January 14th? Jan oh, that's a great question. No, I think I, I thought it was December 14th, but I could be wrong. That's you said that you looked way, at January sales. Yeah. Yeah, I put the wrong month. Sorry, it's January 14th. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of bounces around between 250 and 350. All right, last guy in who's hot this week, Troy. Miko Rantanen, 27-year-old Avalanche forward. Is that a awesome last couple weeks? Seven games played, six goals, four assists for 10 points. Oh, he's definitely a goal scorer. I like this photo because it's kind of got like a, a little bit of like an avalanche background. It's a little bit of a whiteout. Yeah, and a Kachuk you know vibe. He's chewing on the mouth guard. Yeah. yeah that, that I do like, like a new it. thing. Are you cool if you. <laughs> I so, like I said, last two weeks, six goals, four assists, 10 points. On the season now, he's got 26 goals, 43 or 34 assists for 60 points in 47 games played. Kind of puts his pace at for the year, 45 goals, 105 points. He had exactly 105 points last year, but he had a little more goals, 55 goals and 50 assists. Last season, Troy, he was third in the league in goals and eighth in points. And I think he's one of the handful of players that's still pretty young, very good and produces monster number numbers, but again, has zero hobby left. Yep. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit more in a second, but to kind of further the point, I guess. In 537 career games, he has 246 goals, 573 points. So for his career now, he's a .46 goals per game guy, right? So that roughly averages to almost probably exactly 40 goals a, a year and 1.07 points per game. So those are stats that you would think, geez, this guy should you know, yeah. have a pretty good hockey market. But as we know, there's very little hobby market for Nico Rantanen. So if you look back at just like last month, December, only 192 Rantanen cards sold on the secondary markets with only two sales in over $500. You know, compared to like the rookie of the day, 
And that's like yep. peanuts. Yep. And really since the start of our show, we've tried to figure out why some of these guys, like, you know, we say all the time, it's Rantanen, Stamkos, Kucherov. Uh, there's a couple others, you know, pasta a little bit that are, are such good players, but have just very little hobby interest. And one of the things that, cause I've really been thinking about this over the last day, I was like, why is this guy have no hobby love? And there's the, the third wheel thing, right? Yeah. Where hobby sports, two players. And it's like, yeah, but 55 goals last year, and he's going to have a hundred points again this year. And when I was thinking through everything, I, I, I kind of settled on marketing and, think that maybe that is part of the issue and i we're kind of looking at a, a picture of him now but when i was thinking about like how the nhl or how teams like in this case colorado markets their players if you put mika Rantanen in a lineup and had an average nhl fan like not like a super fan that studies mm-hmm. this all hours of the day and you said it asked them to pick out mika Rantanen. I don't. I don't know if anyone would. It would be, it'd be very few people. <laughs> Colorado I, fans would, but that's how I did. I bet. Yeah, maybe Colorado fans, but but the, again, that's something where I think the NHL needs to do a better job, and just in general, and I think deeper, they're starting to do it for like Connor Bedard. I think, yeah, his face is very recognizable because it's yeah. plastered everywhere. But these guys like Mitch Marner or Miko Rantanen, it's like you never see that. No. And so and I think that that's like a really critical part about fandom and like really identifying with the player. The NBA does a, an amazing job at it. Like there's there's so much more uh, recall and recognition. And uh, the helmet thing is probably a factor in that. Yeah. The jerseys and all the pads. I think football has a little similar issue, but football gets marketed more. Uh, I, I don't know. I just wanted to get your input on that. If you think the fact that He's got that as people, they're just not real recognizable. If that kind of factors into maybe, yeah. Well, we've told we've talked about this. It's the it's the marketing. They're not recognizable. But again, I've I've convinced hockey players are a little bit different. They not all of them want the limelight, and some of these guys just play hockey and go home, and they're happy with that lifestyle. They don't need to be put out and have a social media account. It would probably help them if they did, but. Yeah, I think it, and part of the goal or think about goalies too with the mask. No one knows what NHL goalies look like oh, unless true. you watch unless you watch interviews. But if you don't watch interviews or or follow the NHL closely, no one knows what NHL goalies look like because of the mask, kind of like football. But yeah, it's probably it, the cultural thing too. Like he's, I don't know how good of an English speaker ran in. You know, he's from true. England, right? And well, it's like Kaprizov being scared. I mean, he was or not yeah. scared. He was just nervous to speak. I think English. he was scared. Yeah, yeah, it took him what three years to do a, yep. a post game interview, interview yep. live. So, which totally understandable because guess what? If I played over in Finland, I would probably try my hardest, but I'd probably never learn Finnish <laughs> where I'd feel comfortable talking. Oh, knowing the way life works, I guarantee if you were a professional hockey player, you would have been drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> And you would have got to speak French. Well, that every one, day. that one, uh, what was it? The Senate? I, I'm sorry, Canada. You're the Parliament member that was said Nick Suzuki better learn French. Oh, Boy, yeah. he'd have been all over me. He'd have been after me. I'd have probably got deported out of there. They would have just gave up. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mika Ranton is a 2015 Young Guns. His PSA 10 pop 1,010, 46 percent gem rate. Last sold for 101 US dollars on January 20th. It's up about 1% in the past two weeks and 13% in the past month. Yeah, 100 bucks. For You know, I, I, I think about this card a lot because I don't know if you remember this. You and me were at a card show very early on, like just probably a couple years ago. And this card was there. It was at Bloomington at the Armory, I think, or whatever yeah. they had it at. And this was one of the cards, and I was looking at it, looking at it. And I can guarantee you it was way more than $100 at that show. <laughs> so I am uh, very glad I didn't buy it. It's kind of a weird pose. Yeah, but yeah, me and Miko Rantanen. So that that rounds out who's hot. We got Brock Faber, Mitch Marner, Miko Rantanen. Oh, Troy, there it is. Old and reliable. The struggle bus is here. It's a piece of crap, but never lets us down. <laughs> and uh, you got the first pick this week for uh, the struggle bus. 
I do, Josh. I went the goalie route finally. I think I've been lacking on the goalies a little bit. So I went on, went on, did some research. Josh, Cam Talbot. I'm not going to show the picture yet because I'm, I'm keeping this. This list. confuses me, and I haven't read your notes, and I just want to say, <laughs> up that, and I obviously haven't looked in probably a couple weeks. I thought he was like the best goalie in the league. So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Okay. So maybe I'm unfair. This could be Troy being unfair. That, that's right. totally – a fair you're, you're just a, a wild goalie hater. Former I guess. <laughs> I was say, Cal- California Dave, if you're listening, you let me know if I'm being unfair. So, all right, Josh, we had Talbot for a couple seasons on the wild. This is, I just had to put this picture in there because it's one of my <laughs> absolute favorite pictures of all time. The wild in the outdoor game. These jerseys are one of the best ever. The sweet pads, it's got the stocking cap on. It was like but, seven below that game, right? Yeah, it was cold. I remember like, I just doesn't sound fun sitting there. <laughs> well, you think of like that helmet and how cold that helmet. Got. Yeah, because that helmet or that the, all the hat does is really try to keep some heat in there, but it's yeah. more for looks. I love that look. Okay, so he was on the wild. He was okay. He was nothing spectacular. I think his wife probably got more famous here than he did when she started tweeting out that Cam was. She didn't really quote him, but was hinting that he wanted out. He wasn't happy mm. that we brought in Flurry, all that fun stuff. So she she made more news than he did, I think, for a while. But Josh, over the past month, here's a more current picture. Our boy Talbot, he has a record of one win, six losses, with three overtime losses, with a 3.29 goals against average and a 0.896 save percentage. That's so, terrible. It's not good. And it's especially not good for the start he had. So let's get into that. So Talbot was one of the better goalies the first third of the season, for sure. One of the best. If you look at his stats for the first third of the season, he had 13 wins with a 2.02 goals against average, 0.926 save percentage in 20 games played. Very good. Plus, he was picked as an all-star, if I remember right. Someone can correct me if I'm not, but I thought he was selected. Okay, I got to ask you again. You're a goalie yeah. coach. You're the coach of the Team USA uh, World Junior Championships <laughs> winning goalie from the fa- from the stands. I coach the World Junior or the U18 women's. Well, you it's just no, and this I'm just trying to pump your tires a little bit and <laughs> say that you you know you coach at a high level. How does that happen? It, it, it's kind of like a uh, like a guy like Austin Matthews scoring. 38 goals in 40 games and then four the rest of the yeah. season. Well, it's, it's kind of a mental thing tricky. or it's injury, tricky thing? mental injuries, all that stuff. They, I think goalie, the position is very mental. Like you can be hot. We've seen it a hundred times. These guys aren't fired. They're, you know, eight, no 1.1 goals against 0.95 save percentage. And all of a sudden the wheels fall off. They let in one bad goal and maybe start thinking, Oh boy. What, what am I doing here? Why didn't I save that? And they start getting in their own heads, start working at practice, thinking, overthinking too much. It, it's just, it's the nature of the position. I know a lot is of Is there like think, a Chuck Knobloch thing with goalies where like, is there like a, the yips? Is there a version of that? And I'm sure, but I don't think these guys now are so good and they're all professionals. I know a lot of people want to say, oh, the goalies are always weird. They're just weird people, but that's, that's not really the case. They're usually the best athlete on the team. That's for sure. But I think a lot of it has to do with just the nature of the position. And at the end of the day, when everyone looks at the score, and we do it too, and being a goalie coach, it's one of those things you have to stop yourself from. The goalie didn't let in the goals. The whole team let in the goal. Like you could mm-hmm. probably find every little spot where someone something broke down. Now, obviously, sometimes goalies miss a puck that they should have saved. I get it. But at the end, with all the, the kind of media attention and stuff, it usually comes back to the goalie. And this is what look at we're doing it right here by putting him on the struggle bus with his stat line. Who knows? Maybe the team has been terrible in front of him. But we'll get into a little bit of what kind of what may be going on. So lately, Talbot on the struggle bus, it picked him up, came after him, went to sunny LA to go grab him. So part of the in- issue, I think, going out with Talbot right now is he's not a spring chicken anymore, Josh. He's 36 years old. In the first third of the season, he played 30 games, which put him on pace for 60. Wow. And I think at that age, that's going to catch up to you. And it looks like it has in the past month. So I could see a hot start. 
you're 20 games in now you're getting to 30 now you're that age where you're past 35 body kind of break down a little takes a little longer to recover now the struggle bus is happening and the one thing about Talbot, he's had huge workloads in the past. I didn't realize this. He played 73 games in the 2016-17 season with Edmonton. How bad Jeez. does Edmonton want him back right now, do you think? Even though he's on the struggle bus, I bet they take him. So I think it's going to have to be a little bit of load management. I, the Kings' backup right now is David Riddich. The other guy, I can't remember his name. Is it Cal, I can't remember. Cal Pearson, is that it? He's on injury reserve, whoever they're. Oh, other. yeah, yeah. I forgot his name too. But it starts with a K. It's not Corpus Allo, It's some other. Yeah, character. it's something. Like, yeah, I can't remember. What or is it Eunice Corpus Allo? It could. Yeah, that might be it. That might be it. Yeah, okay. So Riddich is on. On I think he should be on a little more notice to do a little more work and maybe give Cam a little more rest, unless, of course, Riddich is terrible. I don't know. But it seems like right now the season's wearing on him. He's old. We're older. But. That's what I'm kind of looking at and why he's joining the struggle bus. Hopefully he's not on there for, for long since he had such a hot start. But Yeah, I don't again, really miss him, to be honest. And no, I thought he was kind just... of a baby with the whole flower thing. It's like you yeah. want to – you you don't get mad when they bring in competition. Just play better. That's – yes. That's 100% the thing. And he even said – they asked him, like, are you – what would they ask? Are you mad that they did this? And he's like, yes, I'm mad. I'm, I don't want to say the word because – we're a family show, but agree. Just get better. Work harder. Show them that they made a mistake. That's that's what the best you can do. So our boy Talbot, Josh, not much love in the hobby for him at all. He doesn't have a Young Guns. His most graded rookie card at PSA is his 2011 OPG Marquee Rookie Rainbow. This is wild to me. Three graded copy shots. Three. That's it. That's his most graded rookie card with PSA. However, Josh, they are all tens, so we have another one hundred percent. We need to start a list: the hundred percent gem rate club. <laughs> Watch people try to break it by submitting bad cards or like less condition cards. Yeah, Last sale point. I could find was thirty six dollars in yep twenty twenty one. Mika Rannon is a bigger hobby market than Cam Talbot, so that's. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I need to go look at that again because that just seems. I guess. I mean, I looked twice because I was like, no, this can't be right. Reset everything, looked again, and that's what I got. But So joining Cam Talbot on the world famous Star oh. of Us this week is your guy, John. John <laughs> that, that is perfect. <laughs> That's, that's is that the greatest, or like the most struggle bus photo you've ever seen. That's the face you make when, if you're on YouTube. That's the face you make when you get notified that the struggle bus, or you maybe that's when you hear it. You just know it's coming up from behind. It might run you over. You don't know, but you just given up on life. So here you go. Coach comes in the locker room and is like to the team. He's like, "Yeah, the the bus for the airport will be here in 15 <laughs> minutes." John, <laughs> the struggle bus is here for you right now. So Tavares Troy in the past seven games has zero points, as in none, Ooh. or nada, zip, zilch, nothing. He's got 12 goals, 22 assists for 34 points in 44 games played on the season. That gives him a .77 point per game average. It's his worst production since his rookie season in 2009-2010. There's a really great article in The Athletic from a few days ago that details his production issues really going back to December 11th. And it's kind of a milestone date for him because he scored his 1,000th point, I think, on an assist, but also had a goal in the game, which is also the last time he scored a 5-on-5 five -five goal over a month ago. And he only has one 5-on-5 five -five goal in the past 30 games, Troy. Now, are, are you a big believer... In, or, or, or how much credence do you put into like breaking down a forward stats, production stats, five on five versus power play? You're mute. Uh, once a show, I'm always on mute. It's uh, no, I'm a big believer in it. It's definitely useful. You have to get a breakdown and see what the production is at those different um, whatever strength level because ultimately you sort of couch power play goal points right yep. as well we had an advantage we have our best players on the ice but where we really need people to shine is five on five 
Um, main theme of the article, though, I guess if you look on the positive side, and again, referring back to the athletic article, is that he's been a touch unlucky. His shooting percentage this season is just under 8%, which is the lowest of his career. And apparently he's getting the same number of chances and high danger chances, however you want to classify no. it, just not converting. So I think no. there, there's a little bit of a presumption that it'll come around for him. Still been pretty tough, though. He, I think last week was even benched in the third period by Leafs coach Sheldon Keefe. No. So you got a guy making, what, $10, $11 million a year, captain of your team and riding the pine for the third period. I think Keefe has even moved him down the lineup a little bit too. Yep. Uh, just that, you know, again, as he's struggling. And of course he got lots of quotes from John recently saying all the right things, right? Keeping positive, focusing on what he can control and just having faith that things will start to happen for him. I'm, I've got to be honest with you. And I, I know this is, there's people that really love this guy and have followed him and he was a huge deal. When he came in, you know, he, he had a lot of hype, right? He was extraordinary status, status right? Extraordinary Exceptional status. status extraordinary Exceptional whatever. status. Ah, can never get right. Ton of hype coming into the league. I've never really got it with him, though. He, he just doesn't. I'm not saying he's not good. But he's definitely not a superstar, right? He's never had a 100-point season. Yeah. Number one overall pick. And that's like, too, not to like hijack Bedard into everything we do. But one of the things I've been thinking about is sort of like the, the spectrum of how good Bedard ends up being. And we tend to focus on like the polars, right? So either yeah. he's the next McDavid or he stinks, right? Yeah. What happens if he's like John Tavares and had a pretty <laughs> good career? So you're a you're good car, good player. You're probably a star, but you're not a superstar. Yeah, you're a star, but you're, yeah, not, a you're not a superstar. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. But John Tavares is the 2009-10 Young Guns. This PSA 10 pop 253, has a 38% gem rate, last sold for 297 US on December 14th. Uh, not a lot of sales, so we looked at a longer view here. It's up 3% in the past year. <laughs> yep. Sorry, you know, people aren't even buying his Young yeah. Gun PSA 10, really. Yep. Cam Talbot, John Tavares on the struggle bus this week. All right, we're going to move on. But for, before we do, got to make a quick mention for Slab Sharks, who, of course, is a gong show partner and sponsor. Very, very grateful to them for their support of our show. The current Slab Sharks weekly eBay auction is live, so be sure to head to slabsharks.com for a link to the auction to view all the amazing hockey cards in this week's auction and place your bids. So I did spend some time yesterday looking through the auction, found, well, a lot of... I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this is the best auction they've had. That's my opinion. But, and I know I say it's great because it is great every week. Do yourself a favor. If you've never gone to slabsharks.com and checked out the auction, do it this week. There are like 20 ridiculous, like ridiculous cards. And really? so it, it, I had to like pick and choose to highlight five here. First one, though, that stood out to me was a 2005-06 Black Diamond Alexander Vetchkin Rookie Gems Ruby out of 100 BGS 10 Pristine. Um, very cool card. Um, I'm a big fan of those, actually. I don't I don't love, like, the, the tributes and modern sets, but mm -hmm. these kind of OG original ones are pretty cool. But that's just the start. It just gets yeah. nuttier from here. This... this... I'm gonna. I'll, I'll say this. This next one, I really want. The last one, I'm just drooling over. Like the last one, you'll get to. I'm drooling over. But let's do the next one. Okay, the next one is a 2020 SP Signature Edition Legends Wayne Gretzky All Time Future Watch Auto out of 49 PSA 8 Auto 10. Now, now okay, here's what I want to say about this card. We're gonna go off on a little gong show tangent here. <laughs> For guys that are known to buy a bunch of wax, I, I think at some point this card is like 1,500 bucks. And we've wasted fifteen more than fifteen hundred dollars in the past year on just stupid <laughs> hockey. We're idiots for not yeah, neither of are. us just going out because this is an amazing, awesome. It's just a beautiful, beautiful card. Well, it is, and you. I'll go off even more on your tangent. So, yes, we buy wax. We've talked about it a million times. If you want to buy signals, if you want to buy the cards you want, go buy the cards you want in singles and stop trying to hit them buying wax but we just love ripping wax and 
I really, when I, I was putting away some cards and I was doing some spreadsheet stuff and I started downloading checklists and I really got into like searching every set checklist to find the cards I wanted and started making a spreadsheet of that and then going out to eBay or wherever and seeing if they're available. So I think my mindset, Josh, it might be changing on stop being dumb and buying wax <laughs> and start buying the singles. Dang it. Well, yeah, you need personal pickups too, so. Uh, <laughs> one true. of us needs to get this card in the next year. Okay. Challenge accepted. So that's card number two. All time feature watch Gretzky, PSA 8, Auto 10. Uh, there's only 49. It's just, I love this card. I really, yeah. really do. Awesome. So I'm gonna, envious of anyone that picks it up this week. The next one, Troy, a 2019 20, the cup Mario Lemieux and Yarmir Yager, dual signature materials patch autos out of five. Uh, both nice patches, both beautiful autos. Lemieux, Yager, out of five. Um, that is a pretty ridiculous card. Is this the card you had or have? No, I have the 99. Okay. Dual I was like, auto. I kept staring at this. Like, I'm like, I know you have one. I'm like, like I can't remember which one it is, but that, that's and cool. It, mine's just auto, not a patch auto. But what, what I, right. is special that's about right. mine is it's during the playing years yes the first time they had a yep. dual card auto but i love love this card yeah. and if this card isn't cool enough for you how about another card from this set again a 2019 20 <laughs> the cup but now it's wayne gretzky and mark messier dual signature materials patch autos out of five what a pair that's how well, i'm curious to see where both of these go it's like a competition and which one will go for more I'm guessing the gretzky it's gotta be the gretzky yeah, yeah that's my guess too this next one is dumb, just dumb, in a good way. I yeah. drool over it. And honestly, like I said, there's I feel bad for all the ones I left off because somebody went bananas selling all like Gretzky dual patch autos signature signatures. But I had to go with this 2015 the cup. It's a booklet with Gretzky, <laughs> Messier, Yari, Curry, Legends of the NHL triple auto booklet out of nine. Yeah, that so was it's crazy. There's nine of these out there. I know. I think this it, one's gonna go for a lot. Yes. What do you guess? Like five grand? I don't. I was thinking three to five. Mm-hmm. With no, I have no context of what these go for, but okay. What would you rather card. have, this card or the Gretzky all-time future watch? I would rather have this card. Yeah, I think me too. And it's the Yari Curry thing. It's it's Messier Gretzky. And Curry. That just makes it awesome. Yeah, I like that they're all three together now. Like Curry autos, you can find those pretty reasonable if you go looking for them. I know I bought a couple. Yeah. Does it bother you? Okay. Here's like the OC. Yes, I know exactly what you're going to say. Blue, blue, white. Well, blue, blue, white. And then the orientation of Curry and Messier. Like, shouldn't Messier be like facing? Was Messier left handed? Well, he looks well, like his, 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 he looks yeah, his rookie's in an error card, right? Because it's oh, like, doesn't his <laughs> rookie say like error shoots right or something like that? I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. And then Curry must be right here. So why didn't they swap him? So that Messier was like his stick is on the outside and facing inside, and Curry's stick is on the outside facing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Messier's left, Curry's right. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. What? Oh. How can you? Can one of those card guys that does all the like the cleaning? Can they uh rip this and kind of put it back together, right? <laughs> Fix it. Re- read it, read it the booklet. Uh it's a it's a ridiculous card. Yeah, and weird. very, very jealous who's gonna have that. Again, there's so many nice cards, slapsharks.com, get a link to the auction. And then if you're a Canadian hockey cards collector, we would certainly suggest considering Slab Sharks for their eBay consignment services. They make it simple to sell your cards on eBay and help maximize your return. They make it easy because while they do all the work from photos, listings, payments, shipping, including to the U.S., and then any post-sale issues, they help maximize your ROI by including your cards, and they're very, very popular and and growing weekly eBay auctions that get tons of eyeballs each week. Plus, too, remember, if you have a Connor Bedard card, you can consign it through Slab Sharks through June 1st and only pay 2% in fees. Pay 13% by yourself and 2% with Slab Sharks. Huge, huge savings. 
So again, for complete consignment information, including payout rates, and to get started consigning your cards with Slab Sharks today, head to slabsharks.com. Hobby news. Hobby news. Uh, kind of a big deal, I think, Troy. We had Upper Deck and the NHL Alumni Association extended their agreement. So Upper Deck announced that it had entered a long-term extension with the NHL AA yep. for physical and digital trading cards. Now, the, I think the digital piece of this relates to Upper Deck's evolution platform, which I have a hard time wrapping my head around. I mean, no disrespect to them or anyone that I likes bought, Yeah, them. no, I agree with you. I bought one pack, and that was it. I should go look at it again just to see what, <laughs> what's changed. I mean, I kind of know how it works. It's like NFT, but... Uh, yeah, and, and and then you throw an e pack, which is like the hybrid. It's just mm-hmm. like there's not enough separation in yeah. my mind. But yeah, evolution's all digital, right? Or is there? Well, I think we just got a message today from somebody that there might be a physical tie into, which again, but yeah, it includes evolution and digital as well. The big thing, and that's kind of skipping, I think, the main point is yeah. that. This deal is incredibly important because this is how you get Wayne Gretzky autos in the cup and any retired player that's a part of the alumni association, which also it's not just current sets, but makes possible sets like SP signature edition legends. Um, because this is essentially again the player licensing for any retired player. But wouldn't I feel like Gretzky would be separate from this, right? Because he signs exclusive, Gretzky is an exclusive with Upper Deck. I feel he has a different agreement, and he might. I wonder if he's even in these alumni associations because it doesn't. To me, it doesn't make sense for him to be in an alumni association. Yeah, maybe. maybe. So maybe a better example is like T. Musolani or something like that. Yeah. yeah, old retired players, right? We'll just yeah. If someone knows, let us know. I'd love this. This is, it is the, a good like, question. The, it's the minutia. I'd love to know all the details about, but no one ever tells us anything. <laughs> So. Now, of course, the, the Upper Deck and their NHL partners never disclose the terms of their deals. So they just say yep. a long-term deal. And, and it kind of like makes leaves you to decipher what long-term means. I know it's like five years, ten years, something like that. Who knows? Mm-hmm. You might also be thinking, well, is this a move that kind of keeps fanatics out of hockey? I don't know. He, it probably makes it harder, for sure. But you got to remember, too, there's essentially three licenses for hockey cards. That Upper Deck needs. There's this one, the NHL Alumni. There's the NHL Players Association, and then the NHL, of course, right? So the NHL is the teams, colors, logos. Yeah. The, the, then the current players, and then retired players. Uh, you could have a case where, and I, this I think this happened, like in with how fanatics got basketball and football, where maybe they get two of the three. And then they sort of strong arm their way into, into a third yeah. or, you know, I, I think at the very least in sort of like the fanatics takeover mindset is it it just makes the whatever that deal would be more expensive. Right. Because now there's another license that you have to. Yeah. Get, that you have to buy. Yeah. The thing I hate, though, in that. That always worries me about it not being clean, like the, the, you need multiple agreements with multiple parties is like the case where Fanat like let's say a company like Fanatics ends up with the NHL PA license, mm-hmm. but Upper Deck retains the license with NHL. So then I know wonder, we can make cool cards. Yeah, that's that well, that's kind of what Leaf's sitting at, right? In the hockey area. They make unlicensed hockey cards. They have agreements with I don't know if they're individual agreements or how their stuff works, but probably have to be. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's a good thing. Uh, we're big fans of Upper Deck, of course, and uh, I'm glad to see that they're locking down the uh, their partners for you know hopefully a long time. I right, want to move on. So Trey, uh, Shane Pinto signed a one year deal with Ottawa. The 23 year old Ottawa forward is coming off suspension. Yep. He signed his one year deal for 775 thousand US. A really unique structure to this deal, though. I don't know if you read this. So 250000 is going to be paid as a signing bonus. 250000 will be placed on red. Oh, and then 250000 in a three-team tease to make the NHL playoffs. Oh, shots fired. Season. Shots fired. And then fired. the final 25000 to tip the waiters. <laughs> Just kick a man while he's down. <laughs> is that too oh. soon? Too soon. 
Yeah, Pinto, of course, is finishing up a 41 game ban for gambling related activities. Boy, it must have been bad. Has it come out yet what he did? Like, I mean, he had to be betting on the NHL, it sounds like. And I don't know. I, I don't think it was on the NHL. Was it? It wasn't. Boy, 41 game. I get, well, I guess, yeah, if you're betting on your own league, that might be lifetime stuff, but man, that's crazy. I think it was sort of complicated where somebody had access to his account in a different state and on their oh. phone and placed. You're right. You're right. I told you, we did talk about something that. convoluted by yeah. that. So, and I don't know if he's playing right now. It's about five o'clock when we're recording on Sunday, but he was eligible to come back today. I think he'd been practicing with the team for the last couple of weeks, maybe, or we, or last week and a half, something like that. But we'll see how he does. Sounds like too that the senators still view him as a key piece of the future, yeah. and the kind of the rumblings are that he should sign a long term deal in the off season. Last season, Pinto scored twenty goals, added fifteen assists for thirty five points, and eighty two games played. He's a twenty twenty one Young Guns PSA ten pop two seventy thirty four percent gem rate, kind of bouncing around now between twenty thirty and sixty dollars. You've run into this too, where it's weird. You have like eight sales in a row, and it's. <laughs> it's you don't even want to like no declare it worth something so i I think the uh the move there if you're kind of a fan of pinto if you want to try to buy low and think that he'll be a good comeback story Mm -hmm. try to get it closer to 30 than 60 is what i would say all right Trey. the last story kind of came out of nowhere yesterday yeah this needs it this needed to happen he needs to be back on behind the bench Patrick Waugh was named coach, head coach of the New York Islanders. Uh, they were in the midst of a four-game losing streak. I think they've only won like two of their last 10 games. So they fired coach Lane Lambert and immediately replaced him with legendary NHL goaltender Patrick Waugh. That's got to hurt. That's got to rub a little salt in the wound when you're a coach and you get fired and then they Im- immediately name your replacement because you basically know for the past. They know weeks, they were already having those conversations yeah, behind the yeah. scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Even sort of dead man walking yep. for three weeks now. Yeah, lame duck coach, right? Mm-hmm. GM Lou Lamarillo, who's eighty-one years old. Yep, Lou's Lou's getting up there. He he'll oh. never he'll never leave unless his his, his health mm-hmm. <laughs> forces him out. My father in law is like he's like I'm going to die at my desk. That'll be like Lou Lamarillo. Sweet. <laughs> Since he made the move because he he believes the team can still contend this year. And wants them to be more consistent in both their effort and play. The 58-year-old Wa previously coached the Avalanche from 2013 to 2016, won the Jack Adams Award, his first year as a coach of the Avs, but then abruptly resigned yeah. a month before training camp began. It's kind of really interesting if you go back and there's another great article in the Athletic, I think by Pierre LeBron, talking about a second chance and the yeah. circumstances again when he quit on the Avalanche has basically got into I think a, a um, disagreement with the front office about the future of the team. It, and anyone that watched him play or has been a fan of Patrick Wise, is a super fiery guy. Yep. Very, very headstrong. And uh, does not shocking in the least to me that he will butt heads with the front office on a regular basis. Yep. What, what I think a move like this means to the hobby is it puts another legendary figure and some would make the argument that the NHL's greatest goalie of all time, yeah, back in the NHL forefront, which I think is great. Because if you think of like, well, who are the big time like vintage goats and Mount Rushmore type guys that are still very visible within the NHL circles? You have Gretzky on TNT, and now Wa, uh, of course, will be very visible with, with the yeah. Islanders. And and it's a case where you know it can draw more collectors of his into the hobby that kind of want no. to go and kind of explore some of his vintage cards. So uh, do you like this from a hobby perspective when guys like this take real prominent roles like head coach? Definitely love it from a hobby perspective. Also, I love it that it's wah. I think this will draw a little more interest to his cards because there's going to be younger people that have gotten to the hobby or gotten into hockey that might not know exactly who he is. And this kind of brings his name to the front of it. Patrick wah. I love that he's back. Cause you, if you remember, I don't know if he was the first one, but he was the one that brought it to the forefront where, hey, maybe these analytics people are right and pulling the goalie with a minute is not the right move. I remember when Wah was pulling, like his first year as a head coach, he's pulling his like goalie. Three and a half three minutes. Minute. Yeah, like three and a half minutes because he knew that's what the data showed. 
And it was just awesome. And now everyone does it. Everyone now follows that lead. But Law was pretty innovative. And again, I don't know if he was the first, but he definitely brought it to the front. Probably make the Islanders more interesting interesting to watch, too. Because yeah. people are going to want to see what he does, right? If he's What if him and Torts got into it? Just start screaming at each other. Have you ever seen the video where Torts goes after, is it Bob Hartley? Because they sent no. him a goon line. Oh, it's fantastic. He tries to get him in the locker room, too. He Torts goes after him. But they kept him away. I think it was Calgary, and I can't remember the whole the teams, but it's fantastic to watch. Well, Patrick Waugh is a 1986 rookie. His OPG PSA 10 is a pop 91. 1.93% mm-hmm. gem rate. <laughs> wow. Well, that's sold for 8,000 US on January 19th, up about 14% in the past month. Mm-hmm. Very iconic card in the hobby there. All right, we're going to move on and talk some wax, Troy. All right. Let's do it. Here we go. We've got some people ask and mention this, like in mailbag type questions about the idea. Well, is it better to rip, you know, buy series two hobby retail and try to pull up our dard young guns or maybe just stash the wax for a little bit and, and sell it. And so uh, I thought that kind of a great question and something I didn't really understand myself or know the answer to. And so over the past week, I've been kind of looking into this a little bit and, uh, you know, and basically sort of the key question that I came up with is, well, how does it compare to singles? Like, and, and, and not just even ripping it and trying to pull the guy, but, you know, is it better to buy wax and stash it? than if you're just looking at it from the investment perspective, then maybe to buy a Bedard Young Guns and uh, see how that goes up in value over time. So. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of examples of retail and hobby products from significant years and releases that have mm-hmm. had some big rookies and go from there. Now, a huge given or assumption here, of course, like we've talked about a little bit about in the John Tavares discussion, is in the case of the 2023 24 products where you have Bedard, Fantilli, Cooley, Carlson, you know, that these guys got to pan out for the, you're, you're yeah. going to make zero money on, on, wax that where it doesn't have exciting rookies in it and we're seeing that a lot right now i mean go to david adams look at 2022 products how deeply discounted yes some of them are so well we'll see what the data shows but the principles don't change so what makes cards valuable or boxes of cards valuable is you know having that big time chase within there Okay, so the, the first kind of example that, we, that I want to look at was 2015-16 Upper Deck Series 1, where, of course, you have Connor McDavid, who is the big chase, his young guns in Series 1 there. You also have, though, young guns for Miko Rantanen, who we've talked about today, Connor Hellebuck, who's been who's in who's hot, I think, last week, Artemi Panarin, who's having a great year, and Dylan Larkin, who's played pretty well, too. So, Troy, at release, hobby boxes for... <laughs> 20, Don't say it. It just pains me to hear these numbers. 2016 Series 1. I went on the Wayback Machine, looked at David Adams, 81 US dollars. So, yeah. Man. Would love that right now. <laughs> Last sale for a sealed 2015 16 Series 1 hobby box was on January 18th for 852 US. So that's a 952%. So if you had bought a 2015-16 Series 1 Hobby Box on release day and sold it for 850 bucks. right now, you'd have a 952% increase since the set came out like, a little over eight years. And it's not just hobby. So let's say you would have bought a retail tin, same series, would have cost you $30 in November of 2016. So last sale of one of these, Troy, was this past July for 349 US, a 1,063% oh, wow. yep. increase. Okay, now, like I said, what we wanted to do is compare this to, well, what if I just bought a, Mc, or, or a McDavid Young Guns? Mm-hmm. How much has that gone up? And, you know, could I potentially have made more money doing it that way? So in 2015, a ser- Series 1 was released on, well, it was November 5th, 2015, that it came out, Okay. I didn't want to look at young gun values from right away because we know what happens to young gun yes. values if something comes out. So I, I waited till January 
let that initial hype dive down a little bit, give it a couple months and where the, you know, the prices are insane and kind of come back to reality. So that would put us in January of 2016, where a raw McDavid Young Guns would have cost you 145 US on average. Today they sell for about 700 US. So that would be about a 383% increase in value if you had purchased a raw McDavid Young Guns in January of 2016. Now that around that time, too, a PSA 10 McDavid Young Guns was selling for about 285 US again in January of 2016. Today, it'd be about 2,500. So that's about a 777% increase if you had held that card till today as for what the current value is. So the crazy thing here is that the higher ROI yeah. is, the, is the wax. And in particular, the a tin. Had you gone and bought, you know, 10 tins for 300 bucks, you'd have like about $4,000 worth of tins right now. And, you know, we'll see if that holds up in our other examples, but what I, what I, my, my theory on this is, which started to form right away. And I think I've had this thought before. Maybe that's why it came to me so quickly is I think even more so than hobby boxes is that, you know, tins, even when they go way up in value eight years down the road are more affordable than like more pe- people yes. want that, that McDavid chase. But not a lot of people have a thousand bucks or nine hundred and fifty bucks to spend on a hobby box. But maybe well, I can drop three hundred bucks on a tin. Yes, that, I think that's part of it. Because if and if you get that, you spend that money, you get the tin, and you pull them again. Let's say you pull them. At least you're you might you know what would it sell for seven hundred raw. Obviously, it can't be all beat up or anything. But if you buy a hobby box, well, then you probably have to grade that thing and. <laughs> Hopefully it grades out that you wanted it to, but I don't know. I think it, there's a little more, I think, value in the tin too. If you can, if less you risky, it. right? And, yeah. and you can have a bigger reward. All right, our next example is the following year Series One release, so 2016, 2017. So again, another huge name on the Young Guns checklist, Austin Matthews, but a lot of other notable rookie, pretty loaded actually, mm-hmm. hobby series because you had Braden Point. Sebastian Ajo, Kyle Connor, Travis Konechny, Matthew Kachuk, and William Nylander all in here. So Series 1 for 2016 was released on November 23rd, 2016. If you would have bought this a hobby box on December 1st or right at released, it would have been 85 bucks through Dave's and Adams. Today, they sell for about 500 US. So you're looking at about a 488% ROI. Again, if you bought a retail tin, it would have cost you $30 again. And they sell for about $200 now. So that's an ROI of about 567%. If you went the singles route and just bought an Austin Matthews Young Guns in January 2017, again, letting the release hype die down a little bit. So mm-hmm. I didn't do it, wait until January again. A raw copy would have been about $140, which I think is almost exactly what a McDavid was. It's kind of interesting. Interesting. Today, a raw Matthews Young Gun sells for about 388. So that's about 177% ROI. If you had bought in January 2017 a Matthews Young Gun PSA 10, you would have spent 325 US. Interesting, it was more than McDavid mm-hmm. in that January time, you know, two months after release. The last sale of a Matthews Young Guns PSA 10 was 963 on January 18th. So that would be a current ROI of about 182%. Wow. So again, in the case of 2016, retail series baby. One, <laughs> wax, bo- both hobby and retail w- are have had better ROI than buying Austin Matthews Young Guns. Interesting. And retail by far. Yeah. Because again, the tins have the biggest ROI. All right. So I want to do one more example because we could do this forever. And I didn't want to stick with flagship. But I thought, well, gosh, this 2016 class or hobby class was so loaded. Let's do SP Authentic, mm-hmm. where you're going to have um, Future Watch Autos from the same guys as Series 1, but then you have the Series 2 guys as well. So yep. in 2016, 17 Series 2, then you could add like Patrick Laine, Matthew Barzal, Mitch Marner, Thatcher Demko, Timo Ma- Meyer, just a few. So 2016, 17 SP Authentic released on May 17th, 2017. 
at release, Troy, a hobby box would have cost you 100 US dollars on Dave and Adams. That's crazy. <laughs> it was $15 more, more. Than, than flagship. Oh, uh, pan, pandem, pandemic pricing. Last sale of a sealed hobby box was last May for 515 US. So that would have been an ROI of 415%. If you waited a couple months to let again the release mm-hmm. insanity calm down, and you purchased a raw Matthews Young Guns or raw Matthews Future Watch Auto out of nine ninety nine, would cost you about six hundred and fifty hmm. U.S. dollars in July of twenty seventeen. The last raw sale is about a year ago for twenty six hundred fifty dollars, which would have been an ROI in this case of about three hundred and eight percent. Now the first PSA ten sale of a Matthews Future Watch Auto I could find was 1521 us in october of 2017 so it took a while people sent them off to get graded had to come back today they sell for about 4500 us so that's 196 percent roi had you bought that first matthews future Watch auto psa 10. so again we're we're looking at the roi of the hobby box at 415 percent basic based on or compared to the ROI of a raw future watch auto for Matthews, 308% and then 196% on the PSA 10. So wax wins again. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if I just pick three examples where, you know, well, what is it? One example does not a history make. Yeah. Right? So like three <laughs> yeah. examples does not, uh, you know, so let's not draw need like, like 30 to actually start even getting any significant. Yeah. Let's not data. draw like an insane amount of conclusions yeah. here, but it kind of makes you think that a really smart series two play could be to march down to Walmart or target and see if they got the tins, buy some tins and just, you know, and kind of the cool thing about tins too is they're metal, right? So you don't have to worry about like from like a little bit safer from a storage perspective, but I don't know. I kind of convinced myself I might do that now based on this i just have to find somewhere to hide them where i forget about them but then i'll remember it like 10 years from now what was the other thing we were seeing the gravity packs i'm always curious by the gravity packs things too i know, I don't bla- know blasters might be another route to go yeah. to gravity feed sorry that's what they're called gravity yeah. feed. Yeah. but and then there's like cello pad there's like a million different <laughs> had with retail but, but does that surprise you like would you have guessed that so retail would have had a better roi than just yes. buying singles Retail surprises me. Wax having the highest ROI doesn't surprise me because just from the fact listening, like we, you and I both listen to the sports card nonsense, even from the beginning, they always said on there, Wax is the play if you want to make big time money. You buy a case and throw it in your closet and you never look at it again until <laughs> 10 years later. But I am really, really surprised by the retail. That is very intriguing. We want to hear your thoughts. So message us on social media and let us know what you think. And if you think that the stashing wax might be a good place, it's just not fun. It's not fun to buy wax and not open. Well, yeah, you got to have self-control. You got to have self-control where I would look in my closet and be like, oh, okay. That's well, maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe just one box. Oh no, maybe I'll just rip them all now because I already broke the case. So let's just keep going. (laughs) And then I'm Scrooge McDuck laying with all my cards over me. Okay, we're going to move on to new product releases. We have another incoming new product, the 2022-23 Credentials Checklist Overview, or is out, and we're going to overview that today and look at some of the design previews as well. Really interesting box design, huh? I actually kind of dig it. Yeah, this is very different than Upper Deck typically does, so if you're interested and you're not watching on YouTube, go check out the box design. Now, Credentials is a Ricky Auto-driven set, right? That's mm-hmm. the appeal of the product for most collectors. So I guess that's right off the bat. But we'll start with the base cards, number to 1 to 100. Uh, feature only current NHL top veterans. So this is not a set that has um, any, like, retired players in it. There's 10 parallels that you can get with the base cards, nine of which are numbered all the way down to black 101, tons of parallels. Uh, just like with ice, right? You have yeah. tons and tons of parallels in credentials. I don't, what do you think of the base card design? 
Looks good. I kind of dig when base cards are numbered. I kind of like that. Yeah. Now, the rookie base cards for Credentials Troy are called Debut Ticket Access, and they have a kind of a ticket design theme that yep. correlates to the NHL debut date. So that's kind of cool, right? For the, it's supposed, supposed to be like a playoff. Wow. Well, if you went to this player's first game, this is sort of a sports card rendition of what a ticket might have that might have looked like for that game uh very similar to panini contenders ticket access cards right and, and so see and i hate these i don't like these like panini really? contender ones i've never liked ticket cards however i was gonna say before it started my mind is maybe changing a little bit i think this looks really cool i think it looks clean but like this just drives me bonkers i can't even look at that anymore but i think this one looks really nice um, there's, oh, what was I going to say? But okay. So there's 10 parallels that you can get with, uh, no, no, no. The, the rookie debut ticket access. Yeah. There's a hundred rookies in that set. So oh, that's, again, this is one of the products Ooh. where you're going <laughs> to see more cards with lesser known and lesser chased rookies. Yeah. Now there is kind of a little caveat here, which I'll get into in a second, which makes it a little bit better. And again, you got to remember, it's a 2022-23 hobby class. So the, the rookies are going to be Maddie Beneers, Matt Boldy, Yorch Lafkowski, Owen Power, Marco Rossi, etc. As with the base cards, there's a ton of variety in debut ticket cards with numbered base, parallels, and autos. One key difference, though, is they're tiered, just like we saw mm. with Ice. And I'm not a big fan of this. I'm not a big fan no. of the mixing and matching of tiers plus parallels. Yeah. So there's four different base tiers. There's out of 99 or out of 999, out of 799, out of 599, and out of 399. There's five rookies that are out of 399. So that's Slavkovsky, Shane Wright, Owen Power, Beneers, and Matt Boldy. But then, like with Ice, there's a ton of parallels that are on top of yep. these tiers. So, for instance, you can get like some nobody rookie that you've never heard of. You're like, who is this guy? Out of nine, he's in the 999 tier, but you can get a green parallel out of, <laughs> yep. of yep. that. And this actually happened in our, like, if you look at our ice pack opening videos, the ice premieres were the, uh, a huge card in the hobby. Like, you know, maybe a top 10, like, rookie card is the ice premieres out of 99. Yeah. We got a Pyotr Kachekov out of 99 but except though he was in the 249 tier and we got the gold parallel out of 99 and why, why i don't like this is because that that ice premiere out of 99 is such a known card and yeah. such a big deal that it kind of muddies the waters yeah. and it confuses you as to well it's a, well this is not one of those but it's a gold parallel of a higher tier that has the same numbering of the I, I don't know the whole thing just confuses me yeah. and I, i'm sure it's a way to just get more numbered cards into sets or build more yep. boxes or whatever the strategy is but I, I don't love it yeah but if that's not enough for you try there's even more variety <laughs> as there's horizontal version of the debut ticket access cards right as well yep uh and then and these have the same tiers same parallels right but, but then you get into the big draw, which is the debut tickets a ticket access rookie autos. Now, remember I said there's some good news with all these tiers and 100 rookies in the checklist. Depending on the individual set, there's somewhere between uh, or around, on average, about 30 rookie autos. So you're not going to get, if you're looking for like your auto per box, it should be a, hopefully a guy you've heard of at least, not some nobody that... You know, again, you're like, uh, I never even heard this player. So, and again, I think that's kind of good news. Now, the, the debut ticket access rookie autos are numbered out of either 299, 199, or 99. So, again, a little bit tiered there. The out of 99 rookies are Beneers, Boldy, Slavkovsky, Kent Johnson, Owen Power, and Shane Wright. Uh, there's tons of parallels, again, all the way down to black 101. Uh, big deal, of course, is all the rookie autos are here. And, you know, all the momentum of this set was killed last year when yeah. it's like the five best rookies didn't sign for the product. So, yeah. Um. Oh, throw up that map again for people that are watching on YouTube. 
this is just fascinating about because I'm like, oh, this is kind of a cool card. I, well, I did. I was trying. I was reading. Trying to read your notes, and I'm like, what the? I'm I'm a wild fan, right? Yeah. So this is the green parallel out of three, and it's from the upper deck sell sheet. So they produce these cards months in advance and to try to you know get people excited about the products. Uh, the only problem here is this card is not on the checklist. So I wonder if they actually produced it or if it's just a photoshopped image of what it should. Oh, it's like. a photoshopped. It always is, right? Yeah. But but typically though, if it's on their yeah, solicitation, as yeah, they call it, it's going to be in the set. And so anyone that's kind of gone to Cardboard Connection or gone to Beckett, no, not no, oh no, just Beckett. I, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Um, and got excited about this card. Uh, I don't think it's happening. Just a, a couple other really weird things about this set too. Uh, that we'll get to in a minute. Maybe this is EPAC, <laughs> EPAC exclusive yeah. or something. Okay, this crazier. Yep. There is. It's kind of a decent card. There's. Yeah. They show a retro ticket access card. Yeah. Like I, I think this is kind of neat. I like the old like '70s kind of vibe or '60s. Kind of yeah. looks like the Atari logo there, doesn't it? It does. I love the colors and everything is perfect for retro. But again, yeah. it's a retro, and we've. We've seen a lot of these coming up. And the example that Upper Deck shows in this solicitation is Brady Kachuk. The good news is, is that this card is on the checklist. The weird thing is, it's the only card for the set on the checklist. There's got to be Easter I, eggs, I, right? I, no, no. I spent a half hour because, and I was I went to Beckett, and then I I went to you know, Upper Deck emails us checklist now, yeah, because yeah. it's for special. And uh, I went to the 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 spreadsheet that we get sent it's the only card in the set huh i wonder oh. if there's others though that they're just that well they're okay not there's out. updates for 2021 22 now i don't know if they use the same design so there's for 2022 23 it's brady kachuk then there's three players that are 2021 22 update retro ticket access autos matthew kachuk so brother matthew chris letang and quinn hughes I just, I've never heard of like designing a card and putting one player on the checklist. <laughs> that is interesting. Uh, maybe there is like a mistake. Maybe because I think that like Beckett and the artist formerly known as Cardboard Connection <laughs> uses the same spreadsheet we get. Yeah. Beckett actually, yeah. if you ever look, if you go to Beckett and Cardboard Connection, you download the spreadsheet that they have linked. They're different. Now, it's not really different. Beckett takes that master list and actually makes different tabs for the base, the autos, inserts, whatever, where the artist formerly known as Cardboard Connection just throws up the master that we would get emailed from Upper Deck. So Beckett mm -hmm. actually massages, which I appreciate. I actually like going to Beckett more than the four I was artists. a Cardboard Connection guy, so I'm feeling the burn a little bit right now. <laughs> so the big thing are these ticket autos, yeah. right? Now, there are inserts, of course, and credentials. To me, they're not like a huge part of the set, but there's one in particular I really want your feedback on. So we're going to roll through them kind of quickly. Yeah. I don't know if you remember from last year, they have like Star of the Night. So they have like first star, second star, third yeah. star. Uh, the Vets are one out of 10 packs. Rookies, one out of 15. Select cards have numbered, but not to greater than 99. So you could get like, in this case, like an OV for Star of the Night out of five is the yeah. example that they showed. They have Speed of the Game, which features the NHL's fastest players. Uh, I immediately thought of a Danny Heatley reference in, in <laughs> when he was on the Wild. To me, this, I know there's a hockey player on it, but it looks like a NASCAR card. With like yeah. the finish line or the checkered flag, mm -hmm. the RPMs, the speed, speed, speed. It just reminds mm -hmm. me of a NASCAR card. I think it's kind of a common insert. Yeah. The most common insert is going to be highly anticipated. Uh, uh, these cards kind of, I think, look okay. But they're like one out of two packs. There are auto versions that are one out of 20 packs. So I'm going to say it's a rookie insert. I'll just say this highly anticipated when I read your notes. I was looking, I was going through the images. I thought you were just saying highly anticipated. Like the insert was oh, a highly okay. anticipated, not the name of it. And I was so confused for like a minute. I couldn't figure out what image I was supposed to find or what. Yeah, yeah the card's actually named highly anticipated. <laughs> but here's the one that well, I let's really. Talk. Let's talk. Ah, I love this concept. So it's called bubble hockey. Now I'm a bubble hockey guy. I had super checks at my house growing up. I had the old school USA versus Russia. They 
<laughs> right that one and yep. then when we kind of built the game room in in our house uh, a few years ago when we remodeled i got the new new version of super checks with like the nice fancy uh scoreboard in it's wild versus black hawks yep. but i also got there was an offer I, I got the flyers too so i can swap out the black hawks for the flyers if i want to love love bubble hockey it's my favorite arcade game ever and so when i saw bubble hockey on the checklist i got really really excited and uh the design i just i don't i mean other than bubble hockey like the word bubble having sort of like a bubbly font you, you know it, it's like like i i think like with like the mcdavid pose and it's just got Connor mcdavid in the example they kind of have him in like the bubble hockey like frozen po- but but they should have had like the full thing, like with the swivel, how it, you know, turns like a foosball thing. Right. And I just think that there's very little in the design of this card that correlates to bubble hockey. So did you notice, like they try to make him look like his body is like, it yeah, looked like they tried to make that look like a bubble hockey player. And then the face and the neck might be Photoshopped in is what it, or they took a picture of it and yeah. Photoshopped all the rest of it. So I, I I get where they were going. I just don't think like you. Maybe not, I'm not so big on the swivel, but the rest of it just doesn't vibe. I mean, I get what they're going with bubble hockey. They're trying to show he's kind of in a bubble, but I wouldn't know that by looking. They at just the had to be more me. overt about the design. Yeah, you know? it's it seems like it's close, but it's just not all the way there. Yeah, it's like keep it going, but make yeah. but pick up and make the concept a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know what it kind of remember what I thought of is the person that designed. So the person that thought of it has played super checks and bubble hockey. Mm-hmm. And then they handed the concept to, to a designer who had no idea what bubble hockey. Is. Yeah, could be. And this is kind of the best that they could come up with. Pretty tough chase, though. Like yeah. that's are one in 320 packs. Rookies are one in 160 packs. Each has a gold spectrum out of 25. The other thing I thought of too, and I'm just kind of wishful thinking because I'm such a big bubble hockey nut, is that sometimes like in hand, these actually look sometimes they yeah. look worse, sometimes they look better. So maybe we'll get lucky, and in this case, um it'll look better in hand. That's a basic overview on credentials. Product is slated to be released on January 31st. There's eight packs in a hobby box, six cards per pack. Now, as far as like what you can expect in a hobby box, you get one autograph or acetate cards uh, for as far as like first star, second star, third star of the night or highly anticipated, which is a card name, not just something that's highly (laughs) anticipated. You get eight of those total per box, two premium inserts, whatever that means, one parallel and four debut ticket access cards. So pre-sales right now on David Adams in the U.S. are 120 U.S. for hobby boxes, 170 Canadian on Clutes and Chara. Overall thoughts on credentials, Troy. Go get those Marco and- Rossi's, baby. No, I, I actually, I don't. I mean, I'm usually not a big credentials fan. I'm like I said, I wasn't the biggest debut ticket access, but I'm kind of interested. I think that I like the design of them this year, but those inserts do nothing for me. I would love. I, to I see- really like the rookie. Like, have you ever seen like the Jack Hughes rookies? Probably. Or Kia just- Macar from 2018. Yeah, I think they're super cool. Yeah, I. Th- I mean, one hundred twenty dollars is cheap. I like, I like that. But again, remember what what product class we're looking at twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, like twenty twenty one. Now I saw it for like fifty bucks. At the <laughs> that they that one give, just they can't even give it away. Yeah, they're gonna actually to like Halloween. Actually, I did see somebody give it away at a local car shop. It's, they, it was a very smart thing to do. There was a customer that there was a mix up on shipping, and to as a way to say thank you, they just. Plug the box, box. Yep. Yeah. might as well. It's basically, you know, they know they're never going to sell it. Yep. Take your hit and move on. The goodwill is probably worth more than the 50 bucks. <laughs> we also got an email from Upper Deck that has an updated release schedule for them. So, again, it's not set in stone, but this did come directly from Upper Deck. So, you know, I think the dates are reasonably close. Sometimes they get moved by a day or two. Uh, so credentials we know is coming out on January 31st. Then the next release, Troy, one of our favorites, yep. OPG Paper 2023-24. Hobby might and retail. My, not, might not be my favorite. How much? How expensive? Ninety dollars. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not. That's uh, for OPG Paper. Bad. That's a lot. 
should it's be a lot for OPG paper. Yeah, like look at fifty percent markup. I I can't turn it, but I was going through the couple of boxes I bought at the expo, and man, I got I got so many cards. <laughs> oh, you get fifty thousand cards. You I mean, get tons of cards. It's not worth anything. Yeah, they're just not worth anything. But I love opening it. It's so yeah. much fun. Then you have 2022-23 clear cut on February 14th. And I believe that that is the combined product that includes 2021-22 as well. Yeah, dual rookie class, right? on it. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time since we had a clear cut release. Yeah. So that'll be, that's kind of a really, uh, almost a product made for breakers. Yeah. Anyway. Then Troy, 2023-24 star rookie box set on February Sweet. 21st. Now this will be like the greatest Bedard test ever. If this thing starts to go for like bananas, <laughs> Then I just throw yeah. my hands up. Then end of February 2022 23 OPG Platinum. So there's a which uh hopefully is better centered than 2021 22. Yeah. I like the card designs a little bit better too. We'll go over that in a future episode. But when you look at there's two things that kind of jumped out at me in looking at this and, and mainly in the vein of what's not there. So if you've been following like all the pre sale sites, the 2023-24 Series 2, which yeah. is one of the most anticipated releases ever, has been February 28th. So it looks like that that isn't happening, right? That we're probably into March, unless they come up with a surprise. I just don't, I think it would have been on the email from Upper Deck. I got to pump out more of those 22-23 products. <laughs> they want to get those Or wait for out. Bedard to get back from injury. True, true. Might not be a bad move. So it's probably looking like March, at least for that. And then again, Troy... The most delayed set ever are Parker's champions. Where what is going on with that? Like I'm, we're super excited for it. Oh, we asked Billy about that. And he said that. Uh, what did he say? He said, "Oh, that they, they didn't want a lot of redemptions, so they're they're waiting for okay autographs to come in." But I that's the whole that. there. So that's an updated that. release calendar. Okay, we're going to get into mailbag, but before we do, just a quick mention for Gong Show partner PWCC. Thank you to them for their support of our show. Remember, the January PWCC premiere auction ends this Thursday night, so be sure to log into pwccmarketplace.com. Check out, there's two huge hockey cards in a 2015 UD Black, McDavid and Gretzky Dual Penmanship Pro Auto. It's obviously McDavid's rookie year. Yeah. It's out of five. It's a BGS 9.510, which is nutty for any thicker card or uh, any hockey mm -hmm. card at this point uh, just an awesome card i love the i love wayne's like happy face on there too oh yeah now there they do go, pick huh? good pictures of wayne i wonder if that's in his agreement oh i do look at it is why wouldn't it be like he probably gets the next approval he's smiling approval. in the next one too right yeah but i bet yeah. i bet gretzky gets approval on the pictures i'm sure and then the next one is a 1997 upper deck wayne gretzky game jersey patch auto which is the jersey number out of 99 PSA six out of nine. So this is like a test of like the power of the Jersey number card. Yeah. Cause it's, the cards a six and the auto is not even a 10. Right. And, but kind of interesting patch, very iconic card yeah. as well. The current PWCC weekly auction is live as well. You want to check out the 150 plus cards in this week's auction again at PWCC marketplace.com. Be sure to get your bids in number of very nice cards in this week's auction. You won't want to miss out on. Uh, we'll review our favorites on Thursday's show. And then also don't forget on Sunday nights starting at 8.30. So after I record, we're going to do the auction that, you know, weird space-time continuum that already ended. Okay. But I got to gear up for my show with Jeremy. It's on his YouTube channel, Sports Cards Live. It's our PWCC weekly hockey watch party where we cover all the best cards closing in the auction and have a lot of fun with the folks in the chat. Mailbag time. Mailbag time. A lot of questions. Uh, yes. A lot of good ones again. All right. Okay, here. first one, Discord, Broadway blue shirts. I know we've been all over the PMG downfall, etc., but recently I found the employee exclusive PMGs to be a pretty cool PC chase if wishing to go the PMG route. These appear to be purple. Didn't know if they're numbered or much about them or I've seen them in person. Let me know if you can shed some light on these employee exclusive PMGs. So, a lot of them are numbered. I I don't know if all of them, but like I remember like the Kaprizov from 2020 is numbered out of 250. Austin Matthews 2016 employee exclusive PMG was out of 175. So it looks like it could vary a little bit. The other thing, Troy, that's interesting to me about these cards is I know that there's like 
that Upper Deck like has some rules about like if you're an employee like selling cards. So part of me wonders like how these get into the marketplace anyways, or maybe if they make an exception for these or what, the, because you know, they don't want people sort of inside dealing yeah. with with it's, their stuff. It's that's very interesting. I would, that's another of those like little minutia things I'd love to know. So in a previous life, I worked in it at target and we would have a, they called it the national sales meeting. We'd all march down downtown Minneapolis to target center. We'd all get to watch. They would, Give some like speeches, Beyonce, but, like they would get like legit. Yeah, I mean, I've there. seen Taylor Swift. I've seen. I mean, they would bring out these just huge stars that always had these exclusive album deals, and they would perform. We would get like a four to five song concert. And it wasn't like one; it was like five to ten artists. But one year when they did a collaboration with, I can't remember the name of it. It was a huge fashion designer. They on our seats when we got there was a bag, and it was an employee exclusive bag. And the minute people got home, they started listing those and they literally let people go because of it. Because really, of, yes, because it was in, I guess when we, I guess it was probably in the employment agreement. You're not supposed to sell stuff you yeah. receive from the company for free or something. Now, who knows? Maybe they just use that to get rid of some people <laughs> that they wanted to, but you know, I didn't sell it. I still actually, I could literally, I know exactly where the bag is. I could go grab it. It would take me one minute and show you, but I, I wish I remembered the designer, but it was one yeah. of those things. In general, though, I think they're cool. I like the purple PMG, the color. Yeah, and I, and I noticed on the back, they have a little note of appreciation instead oh. of like the stats and stuff. It was the, I can't remember it's, if it was written by Richard McNeil or the, is that his name? McMillan. Richard? McMillan, I always get it wrong. But it has a little note, like, thanks. And I know he's passed away, but it's yeah. it's a nice little note. All right, next question. Instagram, EPAC hockey cards. What player or players do you think would see the biggest bump in hobby interest with a playoff run by their team or teams this year? So I kind of broke this off into two categories. It, with a deep playoff run, I think you would see some nice bumps from, like, McDavid, Drysdale, Matthews, Nylander, Mitch Marner, Nathan McKinnon, or Kale McCarr, like the blue chip guys, right? Yeah. They're going to benefit the most from a deep playoff run. Now, looking at fresh faces, I think you could see some nice playoff spikes if the Canucks do well with like Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes. And then on the New Jersey side, if they get their act together and make in the playoffs, the brothers Luke and Jack would be my prime candidates. Anything, yeah, I mean, anything to add to that? Or? Well, I was, now that you said that, I was like, so the Islanders got Wah. Who's a who's a guy on there that maybe if they can make a run and get the playoffs? Because right Sorokin? now everyone will say, yeah, maybe a Sorokin. That would be interesting. And it's funny now, like if I remember right, you're supposed to bet the you're supposed to bet right on Waz first game because they usually teams go crazy for their first game with the new yeah. coach if they win, but don't do it. I did not give you any advice. But yeah, I think that would be interesting to see how that plays out. Sorokin would be a cool one. All right, next question, Instagram, Jets Fanatic. What are your opinions on the Buffalo Sabres sucking so bad with so much talent? <laughs> well, as a Wild fan, it's just, uh, you know, what yeah, I they're just Yeah, they just, they're just like the Wild one. What, what would you expect? Yeah, I'm sure for Buffalo fans, it's a bummer. And it's a bummer for the hobby, too. Yeah. And we, when you think about it, like, I went through the, this question that got me to go through the stand, like the current playoff standings. And there's a slew of young teams that have exciting young talent that have Totally crap the bed this year, Troy. Like Ottawa, Columbus, Buffalo, Anaheim, and Montreal are all at the bottom of the standings. The only exception, Troy, are the Yotes. Four points out of a wild card spot and a winning record so far. That's pretty. Yeah, that's cool. You know what I just did learned? And I will totally admit I have not been following Buffalo besides Tate Thompson because he's on my fantasy hockey team. Do you know who their leading scorer is? You probably do because you looked at it. But if you don't, surprise the heck out of me. Oh, Casey, Jeff Skinner, I would guess. No, Casey Middlestad. Wow. Eden Prairie, Minnesota, boy. I need my button bar. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, we're, it's coming later. Oh, yeah. He, um, I saw it. There was like a oh, like his last year in high school. They're sick. Well, wasn't, wasn't the big deal that he didn't go to U.S. Development, National Development? Like he actually stayed. Yep, he, to play. he said he, his thing was, I want to stick stick with my buddies and play. We grew up playing hockey together, and I want to I want to finish it. And they went undefeated and won the high school championship. 
He's one of the more pumped Minnesota high school hockey players that I can mm -hmm. think of in recent memory. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Discord blade visionary. Hey guys was wondering if you're aware of any card company in the last 30 years that has done any redemptions or full pieces of game use memorabilia. I've always wondered why card companies don't do this more whereby you can pull a chase card from a pack that qualifies you to receive, for example, a game used Ryan O'Reilly stick. <laughs> now we need the button bar. Right. <laughs> Let's go. In your guys' case, I know the cost would be more expensive for the card companies, but would add more of a chase for collectors in these wax boxes that we currently have to continue to see diminishing return in value. Just imagine if the cup had a full game used items up for grabs, a game used jersey, like a Gretzky game used jersey, I'd be all in. I'll let you go in a minute. Honestly, I think it comes down to the ROI, like a, uh, they get the monumental least, box, right? Well, what do that. they get? Like 300 cards out of a jersey? Isn't, isn't something like that? Oh, yeah. I know we were told and I can't remember. So like a game used Gretzky jersey, you're going to make 300 people happy or one. And um, I, I just imagine that. Well, yeah. what about Bobby Orr? Do you think he'd be more open to I'm that? Sure he he, we've heard you know, he doesn't want his jerseys cut, and I, I respect that, even though, even though it stinks from the perspective of the card manufacturer and putting a patch in. I kind of respect it, and maybe that would be something. Yeah. I yeah, I'm like you. I don't. I think it'd be awesome. I don't know. I think the closest thing I think are like the monumental boxes, but again, those aren't cards. You just buy them. Well, a lot of a lot of breakers have done the well until whatnot sort oh, of hit parade. Those hit parade boxes yeah. where you there was jersey so like like trevor zegras or maddie veneers that sort of yeah stuff. but not a car they're not card redemptions mm -hmm. maybe there has been stuff i i gotta believe there's been something that we just don't know about what i like about those too is that you could get like a team usa jersey or yeah. you know some like a college jersey signed to etc all right discord rally sc what would you rather have a premium card of a hall of famer that is a sticker auto but is a PSA 10 or an on-card auto that is in lesser condition? Let's assume a PSA 9. You go first. I just said I'm the snob. I would want the on-card of the 9. And usually it's because I'm not thinking about it from like a resale value or anything. I just display it. But if I was thinking about, I don't know. I don't know what that trade-off is between a 10 and a sticker versus a 9 and on-card. Personally, I want the on-card. Well, the funny thing about ho like the hockey hobby is that unless it's a Young Guns or like OBG Platinum, no nobody really expects PSA tens either. Yeah. Right. Um, um. Maybe maybe you could throw in like Kitra Chados there too. But yeah, I would rather have the on card PSA nine uh, all day. All right, sports card Sweden from Instagram. 2023-24 OBG will be out any month now. Will we see Bedard rookie card in there, or will it be some sort of horrible puzzle card bounty? <laughs> it's going to be a puzzle card. I, I went found the sell sheet where it says it'll be a, like the puzzle bounties. I think it said up to three top rookies. He's got to be in there, right? But they got to have a normal marquee rookie. They should. They should have another one. They, yeah, I agree. But I, I hope they, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not paying $90 a box if there's no Bedard rookie in it. There's no way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so February 7th is the release date, so we're going to find out the answer very soon, but I would assume there's both. All right, Instagram, Kevin B. Smith, with Upper Deck and LCSs raising prices to crazy highs for all 2023-24 sets, all for the Connor Bedard hunt and people spending so much money on products, what will happen if he's a bust? Would Bedard bust break the hobby? What's your answer to that, Troy? I don't think it would break the hobby, but it would definitely be a very sour damper on the, and especially 23, 24 products. But I think there's for the hobby to bust. I think there's just too many, what do we say? Too many collectors that yeah. would just kind of move on. There's, I don't know what the percentage of collectors versus investors are in hockey. Seems like it's always more than other sports, but I don't think it would break the hobby. It'd definitely be sad. And 23 products would probably tank or 23, 24 products would tank. Uh, I think it would hurt a little bit. Yeah. I don't know though, too. Like part of me wonders if there have you felt at any stretch because we've essentially not knowing he would be series two, but been talking about the Connor Bedard young guns for so long. It's getting a little fatiguing at this point, too. It's yeah. like I just wanted to get over with and move on to other stuff to some well, degree. I want him to I want Chicago Group being a baby and let him play. He's fine. Mm -hmm. Wear the jaw thing. <laughs> it's in our opening. We showed him what to wear. Yeah. Pat LaFontaine go to his house. <laughs> All right, Instagram, new pod. 
hold or sell scenario. You spend a couple hundred bucks on breaks and hit a few of the same player for your PC team, but he's seeming to be more and more involved in trade talks. Hold on to see what happens or sell ASAP. So if it's a PC team, I'd probably hold and see if the if the player's not traded, then maybe you want to keep them in your collection. If a deal doesn't go down, if he is traded, usually right after the trade goes down or before the playoffs start, because typically guys that are traded now are mainly by to playoff teams at, at this point mm-hmm. uh, are the best times to sell. But what, what's your thoughts on this one? So I, I actually, this question triggered, I think, our last mailbag where we had a question similar about PC stuff. And we were talking if you're PC, you if you PC a player that gets traded, right? And and does that affect oh, yeah. you, you going forward? And I was like, ah, oh, no, whatever. I would still PC. But then I started thinking about this in more depth from this question. And you said, well, what if Karisov got traded? And I was like, what? Well, you know, I should still probably collect him. And, but the more I think about it, no, I wouldn't. If it's a guy that I think was on my team, so the wild, that gets traded, I'm probably less likely to follow him around after that unless I've liked him and he wasn't on my team. Just think of like Pekka Rennie, right? Pekka's never been on the yeah. wild. I just liked him as a player. He's on Nashville. If he got, when he was playing, if he got traded to Ottawa. I would still be collecting his cards. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, kind of a roundabout way to see. Yeah, I'd probably wait. <laughs> I think I've kind of changed my mind or my tune a little bit on this one. Or we've just proved I know you better than you know yourself. <laughs> True. So. True. All right, next question, Instagram, DJO17IG. Do you think singles markets will bounce back once Series 2 is out? Um, I think there's going to be a ton of singles market activity on Connor Bedard, like a lot yeah. of it. What I'm most interested, though, is all the opportunities that could be created for other players or other really cool cards. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> all the focus, <laughs> attention. Stuff. It's like they zig, you zig, right? Yeah. The whole philosophy there. Now, if everyone else also zags, we're going to be in a weird spot. Well, then we'll zig again. Yeah, we'll zig again. Then we go after Bedard. Oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Instagram, 86 Collectibles Hockey. Josh versus Troy in 2024. 10 shots. How many goals go in? Okay, so I'm going to say zero, Troy, unless somehow I get you to like, pull your back the, the first shot. Uh, you were a very good hockey. You were actually you were, uh, a very good athlete back in the day so yeah, yeah i said yeah. i don't want to sound cocky but i'm gonna go zero two <laughs> it's and i was a basketball it, player growing up so i think it was a free throw contest i would be oh, a yeah. little i was a two-hand set shot shooter i was a horrible basketball player do you but... jump like a hockey player too you know like hockey players can't jump off one foot yeah i don't like, t- i don't take don't i don't take jump shots or layups or <laughs> i'm a two-handed set shot all day yeah, yeah you would definitely win that all right, Instagram, DWCGY Flames. Which Young Guns has taken the biggest climb so far this season and which one has fallen the most? Well, that's a really great question. Wow. We'd love to know the answer, but there's <laughs> thousands of Young Guns. And okay. honestly, there isn't a platform that tracks all of them in the way that would help us get that information easily. But it doesn't, I didn't want to leave you with nothing. So I thought, well, let me go find a really big gainer and a big loser. I don't know if they're the biggest on either end of the spectrum, but. Kind of interesting. So uh, this will make Neil Irish fire collector. This is his PC guy. Try Sean Couturier. Yeah. After coming back from almost two years lost due to back injury, I believe. So the flyers uh, Couturier 2020, 2011 young guns. PSA 10 is up 236% in the past three months. Basically since the season started played pretty well. And the team is in the playoff hunt. So I'm not surprised by that because he missed a long time. Now on the flip side, Looking at and this is this shocked me like a lot. Officer Bob, Young Gun mm. PSA 10. I think it's 2010, maybe that Bobrovsky is. Uh shoot, I didn't write that in the notes. Is down 78% in the past three months. He's been good. He's one of the better goalies in the league. I think he made the playoffs or the all-star team. Sorry. And and Troy, it's also only a pop 100, but it lasts yeah. for th- check That's- this out. Stupid. Last sale, Troy, $39.50 <laughs> US on wow. January 11th. Now, if you go back to the Florida Panthers big yeah. run in the playoffs, this card hit 205 US last June. That's so it's crazy. gone from 205 to 40 bucks. And so he's two, been awesome this year. Yeah, two things for you. You were right. He's a 2010 Young Guns. I totally missed this question because 
I think market movers don't they have they have index do they have indexes of young guns? Yeah, but they break it off into like five categories, so you'd have to. Oh, okay. It would just take a month to. Yeah, it would take. And, and a they're missing. Day. They're missing a bunch. It's incomplete. You're right. You're right. You're right. I thought they had a better breakdown. They have a different one that's better in some ways, but not complete. Yeah. Oh yeah. To... Cannot believe that about Officer Bob though. Yeah, that's crazy. I want it makes me want to go buy one real quick. Pop a hundred. Forty bucks. All right, Instagram, Com Av Cards. Do you think Bedard inserts, so like in Series 2 or Extended, will also have crazy prices or just the young guns? Here's my thought on this, Troy. I think that all these products, when they come out, the first week of release or two weeks is going to be bananas, and anything yep. with his name on it is going to go for a ton of money. Yep. But when we get like six months from now and there's hundreds of different Bedard cards and Blackhawks jerseys, then yeah. everything's going to kind of settle out back to normal yep. where his future watch autos and his young guns exclusives are going to be worth a ton of money, but his like rando insert from credentials is going to, you know, be worth, you know, maybe $5 if the average inserts worth a dollar. Yeah. I don't see a scenario where every Connor Bedard card is worth $600. Yeah. I'm kind of with you, but again, I, nothing surprises me anymore with this guy. Sure. All right, Instagram stores 19. What's the best way to sort your cards, especially the base team sets, players, autos, patches? So it sounds like you did this all weekend. I'm going to let you go with it. Well, I just, I go by player, but I truly, there isn't a best way. It, it really is, comes down to you. <laughs> what, what, what do you want? What's the best way for you? And I think about this question way too much. Like I, I'm always thinking how to rearrange or should I rearrange or should I do things differently? But at the end of the day, I always come down to player. But again, if it's easier for you to do sets or slabs, I mean, you know, I keep slabs in a different spot and, but usually it's player for all the other cards. Cause I always think I always, here's my reasoning to why I do player. It's cause if I ever want to sell, it's kind of like, well, so let's see who's hot. And then I can run to my box and grab all the whatever Mitch Marners and, See what I have. So that's why I've always done that. Instead of no. getting flipping through each set to find the player. That's why I've done it that way. Not that I sell it <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I use random stacks of cards, which is not a good <laughs> All, right. All right. Here's a big one. Instagram Salty Schmike. Cardboard connection watch. The uh -oh. site is still not updated since uh -oh. January 2nd. I'm at an elevated, or I'm not add an elevated concern am i the only where he is at no elevated? i'm worried too now well i think troy we you know we've always wondered will we do another podcast you know murder mystery podcasts are a big <laughs> deal right yeah they're huge Who killed cardboard connection like only murders in the building right we could do yeah. a podcast about that because i like last week I, i'll admit uh southy i kind of i wouldn't say blew it off but i was like oh eh, man i'm sure it's something it's fine well now that it's a week later Yes. And the credentials checklist is out and it's not updated. Then I even went and checked their Twitter and yep. Instagram. And the last post were January 2nd. Somebody kidnapped cardboard connection. You wonder what's going or on. Or they, they rage quit. Or they rage quit. They got sold. Obviously, you, you put attack. Sorry, I was looking at the cardboard connection. You might have mentioned this. Credentials isn't out there. You probably said yeah, that. No. Um, so that's a huge flag right there. And just if you go to their main page and you look at the, you know, kind of scroll down, sorry, and you go to the new releases, they right now have 2023 Panini National Treasures Baseball Checklist on 1229 is the most recent. We know stuff has come out mm. since then. So something is going on. Either they're being hijacked or like the, they got, what's it, ransomware? They refuse to pay. I don't know what's happening, but. I haven't heard anything. Maybe they're getting bought. Who knows? I think we do a who murdered cardboard connection podcast. And maybe Upper Deck's buying them. Buying them for their yeah. checklist <laughs> that they produce and they don't put on their own site. Yeah, it is. It sucks because I, I'm you're a Beckett guy. I'm a cardboard connection guy, and I'm I, I'm more comfortable with it. So I want them to come back yeah. to life no i I, I, I like hardware i use both like cardboard connection yeah. is really good for finding the unannounced stuff i think i think beckett if they do finally get up to the unannounced stuff they'll usually have pictures of all the unannounced stuff 
So it's really it's back and forth. They both do various things well. But where are you, cardboard connections? Someone reach out if you know. Let us know what's going on. Next question, Instagram, Dact Mac Ban Cards. Your predictions for the highest sold ultra modern card in 2024. His example is like a gold a Bedard Gold PMG, as well as the highest, regardless of age. So for highest ultra modern, I'm gonna say the Bedard Young Guns 101. I mean that's, that's first thing that popped into my head too, was by far. Now it is kind of interesting to to maybe do the mental exercise or ask yourself, well, ask you. You think that's more valuable than the retro gold PMG 101? Boy, I think with it having the first, it's like the yeah. first year of doing it. I think that adds a little more cachet. I think it is. I agree with you. I think the I would give the edge to the young guns there. And then highest regardless of age. I, I Part of me wonders, like, it's been, what, three years now since a Gretzky PSA 10 rookie? As sold, mm. I just wonder if if one it's usually like late summer, early fall, like August, September time frame. Uh I, I just wonder maybe if that could happen. What about like a shield auto one oh one out of the cup with that? Yeah, I mean, that could be it. Like we had the McDavid that you yeah. don't love from Ultimate. Yep. Okay, this this next one threw me in a loop. Because <laughs> I don't even know I did this. Got me all like self-conscious. So Twitter X, our, our good buddy Sebastian Engelhardt, says, Josh, <laughs> you often say you'd bet dollars to donuts on something. What does it mean <laughs> exactly? And where did you get the saying come from? I've never heard of it and Google wasn't helpful. So I had no idea. I mean, I, of course I know the saying, but it's like, do I really say this all the time? And then I'm like, is it made? Did I make it up? Is it a thing? Is it an iron? <laughs> so I'm from the Iron Range in northern Minnesota and we kind of have our own way of speaking at times. Uh, got a total complex on it, but I did look it up and it is a thing. So I actually have some information, Sebastian. So definitionally dollars to donuts is used to emphasize <laughs> one's certainty. So the example yes. given is I'd bet dollars to donuts. And then I found the site called grammarist.com that says it's an idiom that originated in the middle 1800s and is still mostly seen in American English. The idea behind the shorthand phrase dollars to donuts is a sentiment that the speaker is so confident that he is right about something, he would put forth his dollars against the listers' donuts in a wager, dollars having the much higher value than the donuts. The idiom dollars to donuts reached its peak in popularity in 1915. Yes, according to Google's yes. The popularity has fallen off considering that considerably. So, not for Josh. You're keeping it alive. Not for me. And my, <laughs> uh, my, my street slang from 1915 is strong. <laughs> Instead of what what do the kids use now? Riz for charisma. Josh is dollars to donuts. That's do I really say it that much? Now, when I read the question, I, was, I started thinking. I was like, yeah, you do. But, you know, sometimes there's phrases I say a lot that you probably just tune out. And it's probably the same with me. It's like <laughs> it's part of your part of your lexicon. So I just hear it and it goes in and yep. Yeah. That, uh, oh, wow. We'll, just, we'll move on. Discord JT Hockey. If you can design an insert, what would it be? Mine would be pics of play players using sniffing salts, and I call it wake up call. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Yes. Even he even put a picture, I think, in his question. Oh, did he? That's awesome. Yeah, it's in Discord. I should have added it. Sorry, JT. My mm -hmm. bad. Uh, even better would be if they brought back video cards and had a GIF of yeah. the players smelling them. All right, Troy. Go ahead. So I absolutely love the wake up call. And yes, on the video cards, I remember the first time I saw one of those, I was like, what is this? This is wild. And they're from a long time ago, like way longer than I thought they'd be. And I would love to have those come back. So I was thinking something around a goalie card booklet. It has huge windows, but instead of logos from a game used jersey, it's actually the logos that are sometimes on a game used pad blocker leg pad. Sometimes they have the logo either screen printed or stitched on there. And I thought that would be pretty cool. Now, I can't think of a cool name, but it would be like a mega patch, but with actual equipment instead of the jersey. I thought that would be pretty sweet. And then I started thinking, my mind started going around a helmet, but I was like, no, I don't think you want to cut up a helmet. I don't know how you could get the helmet separated, so let's stop there. But I, I really like that idea. Video cards, I'm all in. I still think there's a... 
there's something to do there physically rather than like nfts or evolution like we talked about mm -hmm. i need a good name someone give me a good name for my mega patch game used equipment and maybe you put in sp game use to give them some more game used stuff oh be manufacturer then <laughs> shots fired <laughs> i still want a like a kaboom or color blast i, I want to say downtown but then everyone says yeah. animation but just yeah, a right. like a an insert that people go crazy for that's in multiple products but is really it's not it's like 16 bit level mm. tough chase not bedard nhl draft sp where <laughs> I feel we're getting more snarky as we go along. Are we getting jaded? Are we coming jaded? Probably. <laughs> I'd bet dollars to donuts we are. Trying. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Discord, California Dave. I'm not saying I'm happy about the current pre-sale price of $300 for Hobby Box with the chance of hitting a Bedard Young Guns. But at the same time, it costs $1,000 for a flagship Hobby Box with the chance of hitting McDavid. I know I'm not comparing apples to apples, but with Bedard, it's selling. But how Bedard is selling, am I not? I wouldn't be surprised if Bedard's PSA 10 Young Guns doesn't sell for the same price as McDavid or close to it. Am I missing something or am I way off base? We might be looking back five years from now and seeing these boxes sell for over a grand and thinking 300 bucks was a steal. Well, we've been on the same page, Dave, because yep. that's what our whole show is about <laughs> today. So if he pans out, you know, I'd refer you back to our main topic. And yeah, wax could be a, a pretty good deal in the long run the uh but given the 300 dollar hobby price and the fact that retail is kind of the same I, I think in this case even i'm more bullish on retail yeah which i never thought in my life i would care about again but yeah we were actually talked about that because i don't know if this is a spot to put it in we had a card shop open in our hometown where we live oh, yeah. And they've like taken a kind of a different approach to it where it's all I think is it all retail? You've been in there. I've driven by, I haven't went in yet, where it's more of a, the, the owner's thinking is that it's more family oriented and you want to keep products yeah. cheap. So he's going the more retail route. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and maybe he's just new and doesn't have distribution yet too. So we'll see. True. That. But All right. again, California Dave, great question. Great question. Very, very Nostradamus like. Very astute. Have, must have knew you were thinking about this or. Maybe this well played, California Dave. <laughs> well played. Instagram, JB Hockey Cards. Will Connor Bedard, Team Canada, and CHL cards hold any sort of value after his Young Guns release? I'm collecting and thinking of grading his Team Canada cards and want to know my best route for reselling to save up for a Bedard Young Guns. Well, if you want to maximize value for any Bedard pre-NHL cards, JB... I think the safest bet is to sell them prior to the series to release. That's sort of yep. the prevailing thought, you know, the, the peanut gallery out there, right. Is saying that they will be worth nothing once his young guns comes out. I think Troy, you and I are a little bit more in the camp of, uh, yeah, that, that kind of the, what was logical probably, yeah. but nothing surprises us at this point. So I think nope. again, safest is to do that. And if you're thinking about grading them, I would grade them quick. Yeah. Because especially with PSA, and again, it's not going to come out February 28th, we don't think, based on the latest calendar from our dates from Upper Deck. But if it's middle of March, I'd be worried about getting them back by this point and being able to resell them before that yeah, happens. Agree. Last question, Troy. This one cuts, hurts, cuts deep. Hurts. This made me think about my life, I think. Discord Beard Boss. Uh, do you guys got a sound bar update? <laughs> lol also any updates on merch so the, you get us both where it counts here yes when can i buy my three quarters length t-shirt <laughs> all right you know you, you talk about your fail with okay. the sound bar and i'll talk about my fail too. yeah so the button bar saga i mean the longer it goes the more just suspenseful it gets i guess and one day it's gonna show up but i keep i put it on my calendar by this friday it's got to be ordered we'll see if that works but I, I truly don't understand why I'm having such analysis paralysis over this. Like I've never like, usually it's like, oh, I see we're getting, we talk about some, go get it, go order it microphone, go get it. This thing. I'm just like over analyzing way too much. And they probably all at the end of the day do the same things. <laughs> and I don't know why, or maybe it's cause I'm so 
don't I think know it's how to like use it. your life right now. Yeah. Like, it's just you're so. Yeah, you're kind of treating it like it's you're buying a nuclear reactor. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm buying a car, and I better not screw it up. Uh, oh, here's the merch update. So we've got a bunch of samples. Uh, we wear them a lot. I just haven't loved anything that we've gotten, and I'm really I don't want to put out merch that I'm not really proud of, and that yeah. I think is really comfortable or looks cool. And, and so we, we uh, I don't I haven't asked you. Do you like the? Uh, the we got these T-shirts. And here's the thing. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna You're going to really hit the, in the weeds like in them. the weeds here. Yeah. So Troy would, if he had a button bar, would have cut me off by now. <laughs> when you get them out of the package and you put them on, they feel awful. But then you wear them for like six hours and they're really comfortable. Did you notice on those? Thing. It said to wash first, though. It says wash yeah, before who wear. Who does that? Did you do that? I do because that's Mandy read the package and she's like, oh, I've got to wash this. Was it better, though, when you washed it first? I don't know. I don't. I didn't. I don't. I can't compare it to anything. I didn't wear it before. It was washed, but it felt fine. Well, well what was your like? Did it feel comfortable when you put it on, or yeah. no? Yeah, oh, it did. And you don't have to. We got our logos real big. You don't have to get them that big either. But now we're totally in the weeds. So yeah, we're yeah. working on it. It's just going, on. It's frustrating. It's going slow, but hopefully soon. Okay, personal pickups time. Try. Um, How do you do? I did. You know what? Going through all those cards. It was like my own personal pickups again because I forgot about a lot of them. And then I complained on our group text about my, I had an OPG redemption card and I went to mm. put it in and oops, it expired at the end of last year. So what I was it? Like, what was it for? I was probably some. It wasn't like one of like the 3D rookies, was it? You I know what? Now that I think about it, it was, I wonder if it was the puzzle bounty and I had the mm. code, but you needed not, but the thing nine said, of them. Yeah, but the thing said rede redeem this code for one card, for a reservation for one card. But I bet that's why it broke because I wasn't doing it on the bounty site. It still was expired. I bet it was for the bounty is what it was. Do you ever see yourself like actually doing a bounty program? No, never. Yeah. I, do, I don't have the patience and the time to put it together. And right now I'm just sad every time I go to the Upper Deck Redemption site and see my Pekka Rene Twisted Tinsel that's been sitting there for two years <laughs> that says athlete has committed to signing soon and it hasn't happened. Well, I got a Cole Caulfield medal rookie auto when he was like good and everyone wanted it <laughs> that was in stock and it's been like six months and we'll ship oh. soon. Well, I, I Panini, I have three, I think no two that yeah, have been well, over th three or four years and I've, like, I've oh. even requested replacements and nothing. I had a couple of personal pickups. Uh, I can tell I've been obsessed in the past week with this 2020, 2002, <laughs> 2002 Topps Heritage uh, set. So I picked up the Chrome Mario Lemieux out of 667 last week. Yep. And then I just kind of started digging in deeper, deeper, want to learn more. And then I found Troy that so there's base cards and then there's a USA test parallel to the base. Now, if you are a vintage fan and you are familiar with the 1966 top set, which is this, is based off of, the base cards, it's kind of like the old school, like wood grain TV vibe. Yeah. To it. And the, like the Bobby or rookie, the USA test parallel is, was a test they did in the US and was, is way more valuable than the base. I think, it, well, maybe not way. Maybe I over exaggerate that. It's more valuable typically than the base. The kind of key difference, it doesn't say USA test, but the wood grain is lighter. And so I found, oh, they have a parallel. That's the USA test with the lighter wood grain. I'm all about that. And so I found this Patrick Waugh, which is kind of fortuitous given his news this week. And it was like three bucks, right? Had to pick it up. But hey, sometimes you just collect what you love and I don't care. It's a car I card I wanted. Yeah. But I'm also my, my, my whole goal of owning less cards and fewer better ones is completely gone to crap already so yeah but you know what's you, cool? you like this I, though i do like this what's really cool and i i don't know why i thought it might be different but it makes sense it's the same background too as the bobby Orr. so i thought yeah. that's pretty neat with the fans like that's the same fans and actually on the bobby Orr, the guy here on toronto to the right of wa he's actually a lot bigger like he's or he's there's more of him being oh. shown but they actually took it out because wa is a b bigger image he's you know wider than bobby Orr's head so but it's pretty cool. I, I so, if, so. so if you're watching on YouTube, like make a mental note of this, and then you'll see 
in the next purchase, which is yeah. the same set, I bought actually a lot of Mario Lemieux that has another one of his Chrome out of 667, the this base really card, and really then good. the USA test. Yeah. So on YouTube, the USA test, so you can see the difference in the, the parallel between the lighter. I don't think yeah. it was that stark in the 1966 set, the difference. Mm. But the middle one is the Chrome out of 667. So I'll have two of them now. Um, and then the base card. And I just thought it was kind of cool to have all three sort of parallels there. Do you want to mention your other thing? Mm, yeah, I suppose I can. Uh, I got to find it, though. Oh, so I went and I went and just bought a box of or a couple boxes. But I didn't get of... Um, 2022 Metal Universe, and not maybe the biggest hit ever, but I didn't even do a picture, so I'll just show it on the camera. Hit a a base Ottinger gold PMG 101. Boom. Any Ottinger collectors out there, hit me up. Yep, I told him I'd buy it if he can't sell it for what he wants. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool, though. I saw the gold right away. And I'm not, I usually make fun of you for like uh, doing like the slow reveal on yourself. Or what do you call that? Uh, a sweating, right? Yeah, sweating. sweating. I totally sweat myself. I'm just like, please be somebody good. Please be somebody good. Be somebody good. <laughs> you know, I'm just surprised it wasn't Ryan O'Reilly. So, which would have been hilarious. But that would have been hilarious. All right. That's our show for Monday. If you like the episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, you want to support us, want to chat with us every day on the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider a $5 a month donation. Join our out of $199 support level tier via Patreon. It's uh, uh, real easy to do. Go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com. Click on the Become a Patron link or go to Patreon directly, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, and just search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. If you're listening to us on a podcast app, there's a link in the description. If you're watching us on YouTube, there's a link there too. There's also a link in our Instagram and TikTok profiles. We're on social media, so please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and subscribe to us on YouTube. We're kind of in a race to a thousand. Would love to get there sooner than later. <laughs> and Troy, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dollar Box Ventures, LLC. Have an awesome start to your week, and we will chat with you all on Thursday.